the strongest powerlifters in the world have all arrived in Sheffield, UK, where they're going to battle it out to find out who is the true champion of champions. This is a fair playing field in each weight class. The goal is simple. Break the world record in your weight class by the greatest margin and you win Sheffield. With over 445,000 pounds on the line, every single lifter is gonna be going all out because they have to. On the women's side, multiple time world champions and IPF world's best lifters, Turbo Tip and Amanda Lawrence return to make history. Reigning best lifter, Natalie Richards will face off with Team France's Jad Jack to settle the score after the heated clash at Worlds. The most eagerly anticipated showdown of 2024 takes place in the 69 kilo class as three world champions, Leah Bavwa, Corolla Gara, and newcomer, I got the shit go, face off in the perfect storm of powerlifting greats. Only one can emerge victorious. Carlina Tongatea is back to remind the world who is the queen of the 76s. So Nina Mula, an 84-plus world champion, Brittany Schlater, reignite the fire. That was the best session of last year. Who will take control of the women's top class? Evie Corrigan shocked the world at last year's Sheffield in the greatest upset victory of our time. She's no underdog anymore. And she is back to solidify her reign at the top and push back the charge of 52 kilo great Noemi Alibur and the rest of the world champions here today. On the men's side, the lion of the 66s, Penigiotis Tevernidis returns to further stake his claim as the leader in the class and push back the rising tide of the division. Kyoto Ushiyama threatens that claim with vengeance on his mind. The sensational battle between the 74s, Carl Johansson and Tim Maragatti at IPF Worlds was settled on body weight. Both men are looking to prove their superiority over their rival. Delaney Wallace was one inch away from the 83 kilo world record at Sheffield 2023. He is back for once again an attempt at making history. Jonathan Keiko reclaimed his position as the number one 93 kilo lifter in 2023. But Gavin Aiden is always one world record squad away from upsetting the champion. European star Gustav Hedlund gave Keiko the scare of his life at the 2021 Worlds in Sweden and has been looking for his opportunity to set the record straight ever since. Rising plucky underdog, Carlos Peterson Griffith is neither intimidated nor impressed by his rivals and is here for his piece of the pie. Reigning IPF World's best lifter, Anatoly Novobismani makes his first IPF Sheffield appearance to make a statement for the incoming 105 kilo lifters. 120 kilo legend Tony Cliff is here to prove age is just a number and will attempt to claim the world record just weeks shy of his 40th birthday. The King is back. Jesus Oliveras solidified himself as the strongest power lifter that ever lived at last year's Sheffield in a performance that many believe to be the greatest of all time. He comes into this year's event looking to surpass that in what is expected to be a can't miss display of raw power. If there is a record to be broken, a limit to be pushed, these 24 lifters are the ones to do it. Welcome to Sheffield. Welcome everyone to Sheffield 2024. I'm Taylor Atwood. I'm Amelia Potter. And we're about to break down some of the performance you're about to witness. So Jesus Oliveres, returning champion, he's got a mean squat on him. And I think a big question everyone's wondering is, do you think he'll go for Ray's record? Do you think he'll get Ray's record? No, it's a great question. Uh, in training, we saw him squat 475, and it looked, I mean, not easy, but to be hitting it at least two weeks out from competition, he could do it. It's like, all right, well, 
do I want the total or do I want that individual record? That's that's something that we're gonna have to watch closely. But I, I think Jesus, personally, I'm gonna bet he takes the record on the third. Yeah, I, I wouldn't bet against that. I, I feel pretty good that he will as well. So we got the 93s. I think the most competitive weight class here in the IPF and here at Sheffield. What are your thoughts? Yeah, they're definitely filling up a large space of the, the male contention. There's four of them, of course. We've got Jonathan, Gustav, Gavin, and Carlos. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to talk about here. Obviously, let's touch upon the obvious here. Gavin last year got his last squat overturned, mm -hmm. but then at Worlds again, the same thing happened. So I think a bit of a redemption. He wants that third squat. What do you think he's going to do there? I think him and Carlos are certainly going to be battling it out for that squat world record. Do you think that them pushing each other in squat, which we know they will do, is going to then potentially impact them overall? Because if one of them trips up, that could be game over for them for podium, for winning. It's going to take a 900 plus kilo total, and that'll be the first time that we see that. Seeing a number like that from a 93, would be an incredible feat. It is a big jump from the current record mm -hmm. to go 888 to 910. Weird things have happened, like we said. You yeah. know, it can happen. In the wise words of Matt Gary, there are three certain things. Death, taxes, and Keiko taking a bench work record. <laughs> so I, th I think that uh, Keiko is certainly gonna come in, coming out of bench, even though he's not battling it out with those two on squat, yeah. he's certainly still going to be in contention coming out in subtotal heading into the third deadlifts. Absolutely. So it, it, it's going to be a wild, wild 93 yeah. class, and I am so excited to, to see what happens. Me too. So we have another competitive weight class on the women's side. We have Leah, Agata, and Kerala in the 69s. What do you think is going to happen here? Well, obviously they've come together from three different weight classes. We had Corolla come up, we have Leah sitting comfortably right now in the 69s, and Agatha coming down from the 76s. We might see the current bench record finally be broken. We have some big benches, we've got Corolla, we've got Agatha, and the fact that maybe one of them could break that at Sheffield, maybe two today? Yeah. You know, that is a pretty amazing feat. It's a huge feat just to begin with. Two times body weight bench press is just beyond amazing. And to think that it could happen by two lifters <laughs> in the same weight class. And that doesn't mean that, you know, Leah isn't in the picture because we very no. much know that she is. Yes. You know, they all have their different strengths. And I think it's really going to go lift to lift. We've spoken about it before. Go, trying to go nine for nine is going to be the key men and women mm -hmm. or getting that total together and winning Sheffield. So we have the 57 kilo class as well. We have Natalie Richards and Gerard Jacob. It's going to be very exciting. Team USA and Team France meet once again. That's right. It's great that we have two competitors coming out of the World Championship. Jade's coming on with coming here with a chip on her shoulder looking to take that crown. She hasn't been an open world champion yet. So I really think that if, if she's not on the podium or not ready to podium, she still wants that crown of, I just beat the reigning world champion in Natalie. So, and, and Natalie wants to regain that, kind of solidify, yeah. hey, I'm, I am the world champion I'm, and I deserved it and this is why. Heading into Worlds this year, obviously we saw some percentages and one that stood out a lot was Natalie Richards. Yep. At 16%, we've seen it float around a few times and I think heading into Sheffield, the scales are probably tips a little bit more heavily leaning towards Natalie now, yeah. who can be really walking away with that metaphorical crown today yeah. in the 57s. And I think that's the great thing of Sheffield is you have champion of champions here and being able to have those battles now in your weight class just makes it that much more competitive. And it's all right, maybe I can't podium, but I beat the world champion or I'm still the reigning world champion. Yeah, We'll see. So we had arguably the best session in the super heavyweights at Worlds with uh, Brittany and Sunita here at Sheffield now. What are your thoughts on what's going to happen for them? So obviously the 84 plus at Worlds gave us an electric session yes. and I have no doubt that they're going to do that today as well. We saw Sunita hit a 301 kilo squat. To see her do 301 in training and for it to look good, I think I'd be surprised to see her not go for that 300 kilo squat. 
but it could be a more sensible play potentially yeah. to just get the record, yeah. you know, because she can clearly do 15 plus kilos above it, but does she want to stamp that 300 kilo mark? Like Jesus last year with a 400 plus kilo deadlift. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not without contention. Brittany Schlater is an incredible competitor. Obviously yeah. the current reigning champion. Mm -hmm. It was an electric session at Worlds. I think it'll be an electric session today. And I wouldn't be surprised to see one of them on the podium at the end of the day. So that's it from us. We will see you at the beginning of the meet. Countdown begins now. Welcome to Sheffield 2024, brought to you by SBD. It is a packed house here at Sheffield City Hall. I am Ryan Sixpack Lapidat, accompanied in the booth as always by with Joe Whiteley. Ryan, I am so excited to see what these lifters have in store for us today. As we take a peek at the openers and the forecast of those openers, I got the Shitko opening over the world record, Evie Corrigan, the returning champion in number two, and Corolla Gara in number three. Expect some shakeups there though, as the action gets underway. And if we look at the men's division, Jonathan Keiko currently in the lead. Now this is based off of openers and take that with a grain of salt, but Anatoly Novopismani coming into this event, there were whispers he might be injured. I think we could put those rumors to rest. Opening up, forecasted in second, and Panagiotis, the lion of the 66s, looking like he's, well, currently in third. Looking at the polls online though, the confidence was riding with Kyoto. Gonna be very interesting how this all unfolds. It was, but as you can see there, we have them on the same total. So that would be the same proportion of the world record. Ah, thank you, yes. This is going to be a neck and neck battle. And Jesus Oliveris, of course, judging off the Fantasy League stats, was the favorite to win the event, opening, pacing for 10th. But we expect as a super heavyweight some massive jumps from there, Joe. We're going to expect him to do something incredible today. And of course, these are the openers as we have them. They can still change these, put them up, put them down until the end of the women's session. As we peruse these openers, a couple more items to, to point out. Delaney Wallace opening with 775, the world record 841. Looking like he's probably pacing well for that. And Gavin Aiden, whom took two attempts to weigh in on, on the 93 kilo limit, opening and opening 12 so far. Now he can take some big jumps and that opening squat will pace him for an attempt at that record. But is he gonna go for the record on second attempt like he had previously said? Well, I, I expected him to, we thought he would, um, but we'll have to see. And the crowd is a hush. Well, there they are. There we go. <laughs> loading for the opening squat and take a look at that crowd Joe only at Sheffield are you gonna see this there's a rumbling across the arena oh wow I don't know if you could feel this through the stream, but the reverberations will rumble your heart. My whole chest is vibrating right now. Every world champion is present along with the wild cards. Oh, Gavin got the biggest pop. I had the opportunity to walk through the warm-up room and you could cut the tension with a knife and Tony Cliff getting a huge pop from the crowd. Hometown hero. The crowd obviously we're here in UK and Tony a legend in British powerlifting. Sheffield 2024 about to begin. Records on the line. Here we go, so it's Tiff first out. Tiffany Chapon representing France, 155 kilos being loaded for her opening squat. 
forecasted for 410. That is a massive total alone just off of her openers. World record in this class is hers at 161. So she's close already. And the first lift for Sheffield 2024 about to take place. Now this was her top weight at the silent worker meet last time. For some context, her openers would put her at 410. The world record total, 428.5. Oh, wow. And she is looking in good form today. Considering how close that is to the world record, and that's her opener, Tiffany is pacing already for a great day. Would you say she's going to take the world record on her next? So you know, a bit of a jump, isn't it? It's a bit of a jump. I think they're probably going to have a conversation after the opener, and judging off of the opener, the conversation's going to go good. 157.5. Noemi Alaber also representing France. Noemi in the 52 kilo class. And she was bouncing the world record squat backwards and forwards with Plone Deckers. It's currently with Plone Deckers at 171. 173, I'm sorry. Noemi has squatted 171.5. The world record is definitely in play for her. A little bit shaky. You know what? That's kind of how she lifts. And judging by her response, it felt good. Depth is not in question. And of course, the first squat in front of a crowd like this is a nervous moment. Evie Corrigan, returning Sheffield champion. 160 kilos loaded on the bar for her. Now we saw that she squatted 170 at New Zealand Nationals, but she was uh, 55 kilos body weight, I think. But if she can take all of that uh, strength back down to the 52s, then she is in with a great chance today. Yeah, a lot of people were questioning whether or not she could pull off the back-to-back -back Sheffield victory. And her final SBD day of training was absolutely fantastic. 475 was the total in the gym. Let's see what she brings onto the platform today. Oh, wow. And she paused it for good measure and shot it like a rocket. Three white lights. Again, all smiles. Don't count Evie Corrigan out. And 2023 world's best lifter, Natalie Richards, opening with 172.5. Natalie, the 57 kilo world champion. And that, of course, is handling game day great Matt Gary in her corner. She hit 180 in Malta Classic Worlds last year, but we haven't seen a lot of top singles from her in training. Ah, uh, she operates in silence. I think this will tell a tale. Has she got the squat world record in her today? Well, we're only seven and a half kilos away. Let's see how this moves. Okay. It moves well. Yeah, it moved well. So the 57s, it's uh, Bobby Butter's record at 185.5. I think we'll see some attempts at that today. So we're right on the line here, and I thought we probably would yeah. be economical on the depth, but all you need is two white lights. The red card failure is for always for depth on squat. And Jad Jack up 177.5 in the 57 kilo class. This is pretty heavy for Jad to open with. It's really gonna be, is. It's going to be very telling how this moves for her. Last year she hit 180 at Sheffield and she missed an attempt at the world record, but she has done it since at a local meet. Probably the most accomplished lifter in the IPF that has yet to win an open world, uh, an open world title. Yeah, I'd second that. Jad always in the running for a world title. Last year won the battle of the 57s at Sheffield, getting revenge at, with joy. Can she do that with Natalie? Oh, wow, that okay. easy. If we thought that might be heavy for her to open with, she, th she says, think again. 
I and that's telling. I see that world record go backwards and forwards a couple of times in the 57s. Agatha Shitko, 185 for her opening squat. Agatha moving down from the 76 kilo class for the battle of the 69s. Now, if she can take enough strength back down to that class, which it looks like she's been training not much out of the class, then she could win this. Already opening over the current world record. But we know she's not as consistent as some of the other lifters. Ooh. You know, that is surprising how smooth 185 opened for her. Wow. Yeah, that moved very well. The inconsistencies for Agatha. It'll be a hit and miss affair in terms of the bench press. But that was strong. Ah, that was very strong. And speaking of the 69s, Corolla Gara, the reigning 63 kilo champion, moving up to the 69 class. Corolla not backing down from the fight. She could have came in as a 63. She says, thank you very much. I will join the 69s in what is believed to be the most heavily anticipated battle of the year already just in February. So it has, as has been alluded to a few times now, the um, world record total in this class was lower than the 63s. So I think it's a smart move for Corolla. 205 move well. Two to one, she's good. So we're expecting that uh, Gara and Bavois would be up on squat, and then Gara and Agatha would be up on bench, and then it all comes down to deadlift. Leah Bavois, 207.5 for her opening squat, and I got stopped by the strength guys who coach her and told me I am going to be blown away with her third squat. What exactly does that mean? I don't know. We've seen her doing a lot of heavy volume, but we haven't seen many uh, singles from her recently. Her best squat previously is 213. We're already pretty close to that. And she did that at the UK Arnold as part of the best performance on GL points we've ever seen in the IPF. She still holds that. Now, I don't know what to make of that. I think that she's got a lot left in the tank. Yeah, the reigning 69 kilo world champion has ladies moving up from the 63s, moving down from the 76s, and she's ready to hold her form. So it wasn't it wasn't hard, but it wasn't she didn't smoke it. It wasn't super fast. So I'm not really sure where to go with that one. Carlina Tongatea, 217.5 for her opening squat. Carlina, the reigning 76 kilo champion. The first 76 to cross the 600 kilo total. Now she broke the squat world record of 223.5 at Sheffield last year, but then had 232 turned down. I think she wants redemption for that 232 squat. Best squat so far for Kalina, 227. Now there was a bit of an issue at the bottom there, wasn't there? Just a stitch, and I know Miss Groove, yeah, she doesn't look overly happy with it, but these things can happen. Let's see how her second moves. There was a bit of a hiccup, wasn't there, there Joe? There was. So as you say, it might have just been a small technical error. I mean, the nerves must be huge walking out in front of this sold out crowd. If you like squats, you're gonna love this. Amanda Lawrence, 235, and her training has been fantastic. Leading at the Sheffield. Looks confident. Of course, she's dominated this class for so many years now. Amanda, by far and away, the greatest 84 kilo lifter we've ever had. Best lift so far in the squats, 256. A little bit away from that, Joe. A little bit, but she's done more in training recently. And of course, her best is 256, but that wasn't somewhere she could take a world record. So the world record is 249. What do you think? It wasn't hugely fast, but you don't see her move the bar that fast, really. I think she'll, I think she'll go 249.5 on her next. 
So you'd expect her to finish up a lot further ahead than that. Yeah, it's usually telling. I always look at the lifters as they leave the platform, what their reaction is. She was okay with it, not overly happy. 262.5 for Brittany Schlater, the reigning world champion in the 84 plus division. And Brittany won the title in a sensational battle at the World Championships in Malta. And Sonita back from the Worlds. We have a rematch. This one is going to be fireworks. She broke the world record in Malta with 281, but then we had Sunita took it back with 285.5. I think we'll see that record go again today. Yeah, the squat battle in June. The stuff of legends. Oh, the way 262.5 just moved for Brit. That was like nothing. And of course, from this angle, it did look a little bit high. We're looking upwards, so um, she got three white lights, so that was a, a great lift. When you're looking up at a squat, it uh, can be a bit deceptive. And there she is, Sunita, 270 on the bar for her. But if you follow her on social media, Sunita has hit 301 in training in prep for Sheffield. And it looked comfortable. Joey Flex in the sidelines there. This is the biggest opener amongst the women. And you pointed out earlier, Ryan, that they are tracking to be two and a half kilos apart, the super heavyweights. The squat battle continues. You know, every single woman here has the potential to break the total world record. That's just incredible. Looks a little nervous. Oh, wow, well, well, she need not be. That was superb. <laughs> we are on for a battle. An easy opener for Sinidia. Three white lights. And she is all smiles. I'm expecting 10 kilo jumps from her then and getting close to that 300 kilo mark. I think she might take an even bigger jump than that. I think she might go 286 for her next. Well, look at that. Turbo Tiff, 161.5 for her second attempt. World record territory already. And Sunita to put in 290.5 for a second. She wants 300 today. Oh my gosh. Yeah, 20 kilo jump, wow. Yeah, I think that's how she trains though. Now, Ryan, we have our first one of the day. Yeah, second attempts, we're already into the world records. And a reminder, there's money on the line for all these records. But of course, it's on your total that you're gonna reach the podium and win it all. And the crowd is behind Tiff. It's her own record. She wants to add half a kilo to it with one lift remaining. And Turbo Tiff previously has been a bit of a gunslinger. Sometimes she, she hits, sometimes she misses, but she's always going all in. She added um, many, many kilos, maybe 20 kilos to total world record in Sun City, which uh, I wonder if she's regretting that now. Yeah. And that looks good from my view. She's done it. The French know how to grind. The world record falls in the 47 kilo class. Now, how much more does she have in her job? Not much, not much, but she's just won herself 5,000 pounds. Right. There's no one else in the 47s, so as long as nothing goes terribly wrong in the later lift, she is taking that home. Energy conservation now, but Noemi Oliver, 165 in the 52 kilo class. Noemi, two-time world champion in the 52s, former world record holder. Now we'll see how she handles this. She may be pacing for a world record attempt on her third. Moved a lot like her opener. Work. 
it was work. It was. And she got a red card failure, a depth failure from the centre referee. To remind you that we do have a jury here today, three-man jury, who can overturn a two-to-one decision. 173 is the world record in the 52s. Pay attention to that as Evie Corrigan, the reigning world champion in that class, comes out to 165. Five kilo jump. Evie had no major issues with 160. Expecting this to move well. This will already be her best lift in this weight class. She did 162 and a half in Malta. When Evie moved into the 52 kilo class, a lot of people were wondering how long could she stay there? Could she continue to prove upon her previous performance at Sheffield? And here we are. She just keeps raising the bar. She's taking her time down at the bottom of the squat. I'd be worried for a moment. Well, here's the thing. The way Evie's built for a 52, long femurs, long legs, especially for a 52, rather tall. So her hitting depth like that can be a little bit difficult. But once she comes out of the hole, so strong. Now, Noemi has not gone for the world record on a third. I wonder if Evie will. Natalie Richards, 180 kilos for her second attempt. Seven and a half kilo jump. World record in that class, a reminder, is 185.5. Natalie, of course, the 57 kilo world champion, world's best lifter. This will tie her personal best. It was tough down at the bottom. It was tough getting it moving again, but once she did get it moving, it shot right to the top. Yeah, Natalie, another one who's relatively tall for the weight class. Entering into the hole can be a little bit of work there. Knees come in just a stitch, but she's strong. But her only options now are 182 or 185.5, so why not put it on? 186 she'll need. I'd put it on. While speaking of 186, here's Jad Jacob from, from France. So Natalie might need more. Yeah, she's taken that, a swing at that world record already in the second attempt. Jad came into this event saying, she's here with vengeance on her mind. We know what happened last time she entered Sheffield with vengeance on her mind. She got it against Joy Namani. A bit of a world champion slayer here at Sheffield. Can she do it again? Well, she missed this weight last year, so let's see if she can take it this time. Oh! I think she can. Oh, wow. The confidence is there for a reason. The proof is in the pudding. Bobby Butters has had that record for years, and it now goes to Jad Jacob, but for how long? In the way she left that platform, almost like she expected it, no need to celebrate. We got more work to do. Well, she has got more work to do because Nat Richards has put 186.5 in for her third. Oh, the battle continues. I got the shit go 192.5 for her second attempt. Agatha, not one of the bigger squatters in the 69 kilo class, but that's nothing new for her. She tries to add the kilos and then start pulling ahead in the bench press and deadlifts. She might not be one of the biggest squatters, but this is still a huge weight, 192 and a half. Little bit of a wobble in the middle. What do you think, Ryan? I wouldn't go much more than five on there because this isn't the one she's going for a record on. Be conservative. But if we're judging to previous performances at a weight class up, previous best was 202.5. She's pacing rather well. She's not far off. 215 for Carola Gara, 63 kilo reigning world champion. Coming out of Italy, 10 kilo jump. Isn't this the world record? World record squat in the 69 kilo class, 211.5. So this is the world record. Well, it is for now. I've just seen what Leah Bavois has got on for her next. Oh, wow. that, that, for a world record to be taken that easily, that could have been an opener right there. 
that might have moved better than their opener. And Gara heating up at Sheffield 2024 in the squat session. Look at that. So that is the world record to Corolla Garrett, but how long will it last? Leah Bavois, 218. The reigning 69 kilo champion. There's Ben Escrow from the strength guys in the wings with her. Leah has been in many battles. but none quite like this one. Two-time world champion, world records in two weight classes, and the highest ranked woman in the IPF. Yeah, her resume already has her pacing for the Hall of Fame. But wouldn't it be nice to win this one? All right, so now I can start saying what the rumors were saying. And look at Leah Bava fired up. Look at Leah on the platform today. I can't remember the last time I saw her that hungry for it. Listen, last Sheffield, she came in injured, and you could tell this Sheffield, she's 100% on point. The rumors were she going to 220s. We're already at 218. Let's see where she lands. And Car Carlina Tongatea. 226 for her second attempt, another world record. She did 227 at New Zealand Nationals. She has done this weight before. But there's some pressure on her shoulders at this event. 217.5. Had a little bit of a hiccup, but sometimes you see that in an opener. This will give an indication exactly where she's at on the day. Currently forecast in fifth place overall. Of course, we've got a long way to go yet. Look better. That was way better than a rope. It must just have been a technical error, a little bit of nerves. And she's right back on pace. I've already lost count of the world record. Yeah, it happens so quickly when you're here at Sheffield. <laughs> Good luck there. Amanda Lawrence, 249.5, speaking of world records. Here we go again. So we've seen her do 260 in training. Would expect this to go. Yeah, Amanda's prep for Sheffield. Looks like she's pacing for the world record total. One of the greatest power lifters of all time. Her resume absolutely stacked. And of course, she's been pushing up the total world record for ages, so she's got more to do than in some of the weight classes. She asked the crowd for a little bit of hype, and they gave it to her. Whoa, big brace. Whoa, that's a fight. That was a fight, Joe. That's on the limit. I expected that to be a little bit easier. Oh, wow, look, at she's hyped. She's got a world record. She's collecting the money, but it's got to be asked, how much more is in the tank? That was I, a fight. I don't know whether she should maybe not come out for a third, keep it in reserve. She's got 5,000 pounds for that squat. She's due another 5,000 for the deadlift in total. Maybe keep your strength. I, I wouldn't be opposed to that. I just, I know Amanda's a bit of a tiger and she loves a fight. 277.5, speaking about loving the fight, Brittany Schlater had a hell of a fight in Worlds 2023 Malta, back again for round two. And she came out on top. The reigning world champion in the women's top class. She's hit 281. That record got taken from her. And this 
moving well still. Took that 15 kilo drip rather nicely. Calm, cool, and collected as per usual for Britt. No, she took a 15 kilo jump to a second. So just trying to figure out where she'll go next because Anita looks about to push the world record miles up the road. 290.5 for Sunita, that's a 20.5 kilo jump. That's a monstrous jump for this young lady, but... It is, but she does take these big jumps in training, so... Yep, and as previously stated in training, 301 got everybody's attention. Can we see a 300 kilo squat by a woman to IPF World Standards? Well, I think that's her intention, otherwise she would have taken the record at 286. So she's pacing for 300, I'm sure of it. It would be a massive milestone for a woman to hit 300 kilos here at Sheffield. Just a couple of years ago, it would have been unfathomable, but here we are. And so Anita likes to take her time. You see the clock in the back, 10 seconds. Worry there, but yeah. she got it to the top. Be still, my wild heart. Look at that. Three white lights, and she claps. I'm wondering, though, I don't want to read too much into it. We already saw Carlina have something similar, and it wasn't anything major to read into. But let's take another look at this. Right there. A little bit of a hiccup. Yeah. Was it a misgroove? I don't know. I'm not sure that's what her usual failure point, so maybe it's just a mistake. I think she'll try it. I would love to see her load up 300 kilos. She doesn't exactly have a lot of room else to go. Um, Tiffany Chapon, 162.5 for Turbo Tiff, reigning 47 kilo great. So already we're through to these third round of squats for the women, and you have the forecast on the screen right now. You see all those world records falling, and we're only in the second round of squats. Beginning in the third round and final round, and 161.5 for Turbo Tiff was a bit of a fight. Tiff previously found the sport as a boxer, so if it's a fight you want, it's a fight you'll have. She's likely good for it. One kilo, Joe. It's difficult because she, she used up a lot of energy on her second, but if she's going to extend her own world record total, she's going to need every kilo. Every kilo counts. That looks good. Nope. And you know what I like about this? If you're gonna fail, wave it off early and don't empty the tank. You had asked, you know, previously, do you come out for your third? If the second's a big grinder, if you're gonna fail, fail like that. Absolutely. But she took the squat world record on her second, so she has her 5,000 pound bonus. Yeah, 5,000 pounds suits you just well. I get out of bed for that. 167.5, two and a half kilo jump for Evie Corrigan. And that was a little bit of a surprise. I thought she would extend a little bit further, but maybe she's keeping it in reserve for a deadlift. She's a big deadlifter. Yeah, two and a half kilo jump. 173 is the world record in the 52 kilo class. And that's the thing, when you get close to these world records, the temptation is there to reach for them and possibly overreach. Evie, a master game planner, knows how to pace herself. Of course, she's in the fight for the podium. She's not going to want to give anything away, but I think she had more. She likely had more, but think about how much she has in the reserve for bench press, deadlift. Look at her shrug her shoulders. Yeah, you know what? Probably could have had a kilo more, but a couple of kilos more, but it is what it is. Easy to be wise after the event. Yeah. Yeah, she, that literally moved like a second attempt. And 170 for Noemi Alibur. And again, what I like about Noemi's game planning and attempt selection here, going up five kilos. And I think you're right, the temptation would have been huge to try for the world record. But if it's not there, you're giving a lot away. Yusuf, her coach. 
He was here at last Sheffield, last Worlds. Plus knowing he was on the podium last year. We have a much fiercer competition this year though. Take a look at this for a second there. She's always a little bit crooked and that's normal. And I wanted to see how she walked off the platform and, and appeared to be okay. So all systems to go as Natalie Richards has 186.5 loaded for her second attempt. Natalie looking to take the world record in the 57 kilo class. Jad Jacob took it in her second attempt. And she is in the midst of a major battle here. Team USA versus Team France at Sheffield 2024. Here we go. Jad Jacob took it in the second. And Nat Richards take it back. She has the total world record. And this would set her up really well for smashing that total world record out of the water. Oh, she's already smiling halfway up. She had time to stick her tongue out to the crowd. <laughs> Three white lights and Natalie Richards snagging that world record, collecting 5,000 pounds. Or is she? Yeah, that right knee came in, but she just fought through it, and Jad Jacob, 188. To try to take that record straight back from Natalie Richards. A two kilo jump and 186 moved pretty well for Jad. If I had to guess, two kilos won't break her. I would think she'd, I would think she'd get it. I think this is great attempt selection. Stanley Odin handling her pacing on the sidelines nervously. He himself had a great performance at Europeans. This is more than she's ever done on the platform before. But she looked great on her second. Oh, what a fighter. And it looks like she's done it. Jad Jacob is on point today. Three white lights. And that is the same squat world record broken three times in the last 20 minutes. Redemption is within reach for Jad Jacob. And I got the shit go 197.5 for her third and final attempt. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's right on the money. 202 was her previous best. But obviously that was in the 76s. So we're relatively close to that considering she dropped the weight class. I think five kilos is probably an appropriate jump yeah, for her. Yeah, I think so. This isn't the lift where she's going to make up the most of the ground. What a heart on Agatha! Oh, wow! That had come to a stop, but she got it moving again. The fight came, and she just refused to let that one go. Every kilo was going to count in the 69 kilo battle. And look at this, Joe. Right away out of the hole, fought all the way up. I really thought she'd failed it. I thought it had stopped. The elbows flicked back, and she kept it moving. Refused to let it go and 220 for Car Carola Gara representing Italy, the reigning 63 kilo champion, moving up for the battle of the 69s. This is more than she's ever done on the platform before. Well, the world record coming in was 217.5, and I believe 218 by Leah in yeah. round two. I think we came in at 211.5. We've knocked or 211.5 out of the water. Wow. And she had more in the tank, if I'm honest. She did. That was impressive. Whoa. 
So that's her second time she's broken the world record. It's interesting already. she didn't take a chip there. Well, I guess they're not as crucial because we're basing it off world records, not sort of being ahead in the weight class. Right. There are 369s, though, sure, but let's... Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, Leah hasn't taken the chip either. Yeah, yeah. Leah Bavlo, 225. This is a monstrous squat for a 69 kilo lifter. Now, I had heard whispers she was going to enter into the 220s. Well, here we are, and 218 moved very well for her. Yeah, I wondered if she'd hit 220, but 225, that's phenomenal. Her platform best was 213, only 30 minutes ago. We've left that far behind. We are so deep into world record territory right now, we can't even see the shoreline. There's a huge chant running around the auditorium. Oh, Leah Babwa, 225 with authority. So hurt. Listen, if you thought she was going to be scared because all of these other lifters are entering into her weight class, Guess again, she's ready for the fight. I haven't seen her lift this well since uh, the UK Arnold. I don't know if I've ever seen her lift this well, to be honest. <laughs> right. Well, she's never squatted that weight before, so you're definitely right. 230.5 for Carlina Tongatea, the 76 kilo queen. 217.5 looked a little shaky. 226 looks smooth. What will this look like? We'll see, see. The Italians are on their, or sorry, the New Zealanders are on their feet. Four and a half kilo jump. The way 226 move, it seems like an appropriate jump. I think so. It's not quite the 232 she missed last year, but um, she's taking the sensible attempt selections. Bang on. Yeah, she based out. You see Dom in the background looked happy. Three white lights. And talk about a recovery after that opener. Absolutely brilliant. Great lifting from Carlina. Amanda Lawrence says she looks fired up. 253, now 249.5 look like all she had. And we would let her off the hook if she didn't come out for a third. But here we are, Joe. Could you let this crowd down? You know what, it's very difficult. This is <laughs> this is a once in a lifetime atmosphere. You only get to walk out on that stage nine times. Don't give one of them away. Yeah, I don't falter for coming back out, giving the crowd in the house and all those online. One more squat attempt and looking to push. Oh, she is fired up today. <laughs> Cursing that bar. I'm glad she's not mic'd. She's going to have to bring everything, though. The second was tough. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes a little bit of a, a rise in intensity is all you need to do it. She definitely looks more fired up than her second attempt. Nope. Nice catch by the spotters. Well, it's, it's not a surprise really, but a good honor for coming out and having a go at it. And again, like Turbo Tiff, didn't empty the tank for that failed attempt. Failed not much out of the hole there, waved it off. And Brittany Schlater, 285 for her third and final. In the world record, 285.5. Well, Sunita took it to 90. Oh, sorry, yeah. 290.5. World record coming into the event was 285.5 for a little bit of context. Oh, and I've just looked to see what Sunita's yep. put in. She's put in 300.5. Wow. Put a pin in that. First, we have Brittany. Seven and a half kilo jump, 277.5. Sounds reasonable. Second attempt move well.
Brittany, battle tested. Find yourself in the midst of another one here today. She's got it. Yeah, she likes to bare her teeth when she fights. Little bit, little bit of a fight on that one, but two to one, it's good. But she's giving a little bit away on squat to Sunita, but she's got the bigger bench and they are well matched on deadlift. Speaking of Sunita, 300.5. Now this is a milestone in women's powerlifting. The first 300 kilo squat being loaded. Could we see it? Could it happen here tonight in Sheffield City Hall? History in the making. She's done it in training. And she is waiting on that sideline. Look at the look on her face, her eyes, the focus and the crowd receives her. You know what? 290.5 was a scrap, but I'm telling you, her intensity is a whole nother gear right now. Same with the crowd. Look at the spotters look nervous. <laughs> like they're about to attempt history. The final squat for the women. Could we see that 300 kilo barrier go? We will all remember the day 300 kilos falls. If anyone can do it, Sunita can do it. This is it. Oh, whoa! Wow. Sonita, 300 kilos got taken for a ride, and the judges, three white lights, and history is made in Sheffield 2024. Oh, my word. What a, what a way to close the squad event for the women. Wow! Pulling it up on the day is something else. Can you believe it? I don't know if we'll ever see it get to our P10. Whoa, and <laughs> as we settle down back into the openers, my goodness. Already Sheffield 2024 has delivered and Kyoto Ushiyama will start the men's with 215. And if the men provide the show even half of what the women did, we're in for a treat. We had so many world records fall in the squats. Some people breaking the squat world record twice. What will the men bring us? Kyoto has totaled 712.5 at Japanese nationals. That is over the world record. So he's capable. Can he bring it here today? Because he's in with a fight with Panagiotis, the reigning 66 kilo champion. It's a rematch. It's a bitter feud. I think the squat world record is a little out of reach in this class. It's um, Jonathan Garcia, I think. Yeah, Jonathan, 275.5, but this squat event is still pivotal for this battle. Kyoto and Penn are so close. Despite Penn beating the reigning world champion, Kyoto the favorite, and Penn took issue with that. Let's see how the battle unfolds. That's a very aggressive low bar. And look at 215, move like an opener should. It did, he didn't have the best competition last year at Sheffield. Ah, wow. Ah, a blue and a red. So that's a side ref giving it for death and a side ref giving it for lockout. See, and that's oh, where the- up and down. The, the, yeah. Well, I think it was the up and down of the bar at the beginning of the squat. Pana opening with 240, and his wife Anissa handling him today. That is going to give confidence to Team France, and Pena, a crowd favorite. Spoke with him in the warm-up room. Pena, a prideful man, took offense to the Fantasy League stats that he's the underdog despite being the world champion, looking to prove people wrong. And I tell you what, when Pena's an underdog, that's when he's at his most ferocious. He's done 216 competition before, but I think it was a while ago. 
He's been trekking around 245 since then. And we're already opening at 240. Let's see where he's at. Oh, that's smooth for Penna. I mean, that's fast for Penna, absolutely. That's lightning fast for Penna. Listen, Penna had done 730 in the gym, and everyone says, well, Ken, oh, look at Penna's fired up. I told you so, it's coming already. Penna, the story on him was, doesn't bring those big lifts onto the platform, but he's a two-time world champion, and he knows how to get it done. Can he get it done here today? Carl Johansson, speaking of Penna being a reigning world champion and an underdog, Joe, the reigning 74 kilo world champion, also an underdog today, surprisingly. I was really surprised at the results of that poll, how many people had Tim ahead. I think it's gonna be close, but it was something like 70% in Tim. Rather surprising. Carl looking to prove the odds wrong with 252.5 in his opener. Carl and Tim, toe to toe at Worlds, tied on and had to be decided on body weight. This is gonna be very close today. Now we're expecting Tim to squat a bit more, but Calais has the deadlift. The thing is, judging by the training, so does Tim now. We'll have to see how it all shakes up. No major ask there, that was smooth. No notes on that one, that looked like an opener. Both Tim and Carl battling 74 kilo goat, Taylor Atwood, both defeating him. Taylor now amongst the media team here, and we're glad to have him. And Tim Monagotti representing New Zealand, and New Zealand for a smaller populated nation has a lot of world-class lifters. It has, and we have three of them here tonight. 270 for his opener. His best, 283.5. His best in this weight class. Uh, he was previously campaigning in the 83 kilo class. So he's opening only 13 and a half kilos below his own world record. His training has been fantastic. It has, and especially as you say on the deadlift. Oh my goodness, wow. I think that world record's in danger. I think he's in danger when he's second. Yeah, I'd be okay with that kind of a jump. And New Zealand building a bit of a legacy here. Delaney Wallace, 282.5. Now Delaney had been battling injuries, talking with Delaney just a couple days ago, and he said, I think it's all turned around just in time. Oh, wow. Yeah, I haven't seen much training from him. I haven't seen many big numbers from him. I wasn't sure where he was, but that's good news. If you remember last year at Sheffield, Delaney, one inch away from that final deadlift so close. to lock out that world record. And here he is, he wants that world record. It belongs to Russell or he. We all know Russell's coming back. And before he comes back, Delaney wants to take that world record and tell him, you're gonna deal with me. Got it, 305 at Sheffield last year. And there is the signature Delaney pre-squat ritual. Of course, you only get 60 seconds on the platform. He does use up quite a bit of a few of those with his dancing. It's almost his version of powering up and the way he moved Whoa. that. That looked great. I asked Delaney, are you sure? He said, we're gonna know when I squat. Well, the way 282.5, Joe, what do you think? I think he's back on form. He had a nice little smile as he walked up the platform <laughs> there. He looked confident and that moved well. Breeze by Joey Flex, who had his hand up. Now he's too focused for that. No celebrating yet, two more attempts. And Jonathan Keiko, reigning 93 kilo world champion, 93 kilo great, been in so many battles, podium, at last year's Sheffield returns once again, 285 for Jonathan. He's got some support here in the crowd. I saw Jonathan in the warm-up room. He looked like a boxer waiting to get called out into the ring. He's ready to fight. Of course, we have four 93 kilo lifters here today. Jonathan always in the midst of a meat grinder. That 93 kilo class, so talented. But that's the story of Jonathan, never an easy day in the office. But he never checks out early, mostly going nine for nine. Oh. 
Wow, that was smooth. It was deep, it was smooth. Not super fast, but I think that looked great for his opener. Kaiko at the world level, so consistent. And it's that consistency that pays off. But up next, Gustav Hedlund. Gustav, I remember him in 2018 as a junior world champion, out totaling the Open. Very rare you saw that. We knew he was special on that day, and here he is all these years later, always a perennial contender, just inches away from upsetting Kaiko in 2021, back and wants vengeance, opening with 300 kilos representing Sweden. His training has been on fire recently. Hasn't had to travel too far. I talked to Alex Erickson, his coach, and... Oh yeah, oh, wow. That was the easiest statement. I was, so I was just about to say, they told me strongest he has ever been, and that is scary. Yeah, he looks it. His best on the platform so far is 320, but I think we're gonna see him way north of that. And Gavin Eden, 305, the world record, 331. Now we all know the story on Gavin Eden, forever chasing that squat world record. He has hit it twice, only to have the jury take it away from him. Can he hit it again and solidify it this time? Faced up to the crowd on his way to the platform. Oh, he'll let you know he's in the house. He'll let you know he's about to squat. He looks serious. Could this be the day that Gavin Aiden finally walks away with a squat world record? The story on Gavin, if he ever goes three for three in squats, you better watch out. Can he do it? This opener is gonna give us a bit of a measuring stick. We know he's strong enough. Oh, 305 moves smooth for Gavin and the depth is good. Three white lights. So he knows how deep Dog is silencing the doubters, silencing. It's coming, it's coming. Three white lights, he knows the depth he needs. Look at how intense wow. just, Ice wow, I got shivers. I think he means business today. Speaking of meeting, or meaning business, Carlos Peterson Griffith, representing Guyana, opening at 310, also very close to that world record 331, Carlos, coming into this event said he feels overlooked, he's gonna prove people wrong. His training he showed me in the DMs, absolutely fantastic, expect some surprises. Well, I think we have a first surprise here, he's opening at 310, his best ever squat on the platform is 320. Came in as a regional wild card He's gonna have to work for it. I've seen Gavin Aiden put the world record in at 331.5. And that was planned for Gavin. Oh my goodness. Oh, nice, very nice. And there is the warning shot to the rest of the 93s. I am not here just as a wild card. I am a contender. I am amongst the elite. 332 for his second. I think he's gonna track Gavin and match him. Look at that. And Tony Cliff, Britain's favorite son, 330. He is the, he, he is the daddy of British powerlifting. He's the second generation powerlifter that's equipped and classic. Everyone in British powerlifting knows him. Just weeks away from his 40th birthday, a 20 year veteran, champion, in and out of equipment. We have a chant going for Tony. Listen to that chant. The Brits are behind him. His best is 350, this is 330. And Tony delivers with his opening squat. He's on the board, he likes to take big jumps. <laughs> And here he is, the 2023 world's best lifter, Anatoly Novo Pismani, 340 kilos, the world record, which is his, 362.5. Now, we had all heard the rumors of him being injured. I asked him in the back. He said, yes, 
I was injured, I am slightly injured. Still opening with 340, I think wow. he's just going all in. I think he is, and, and why not? He still has the 93 kilo world record that the other chaps are chasing today. A legend in the game. Incredible squatter. Let's see how this moves. Okay, well, if he's injured. That moves so well. We've seen him absolutely grind out squats and then put 10 kilos on it and do it again, but that was easy. And he can grind. I think that world record is up for grabs, if I'm honest. I mean, if he's injured, it's all hard from here, but this is Sheffield. And Jesus Oliveras, 425 representing USA. World record 477.5, held by Ray Williams. Six years it stood and stands, can it fall? I think he can do it. He did 475 in training only a week or so ago. Jesus, the strongest power lifter that ever lived. The crowd. Deadlift and total world records. Can he have the squat world record to it? We're watching a living legend do his thing and the crowd chanting Jesus. And he's still a young guy. Oh, there's a lot of miles left on him. Oh! Blink and you miss it! The whip of the bar nearly took him out. You don't see an like a bar whip like that. We've lost it. 425 and you blink and you miss it. So we'd expect a big jump from him now. Kyoto Ushiyama once again attempting 215. Can he right the ship, regain form and catch up the penna? There's plenty of time left. Now he got one red on deck and he got one blue card. The blue card is either for, um, uh, it's the up and down movement of the bar, isn't it? Or Paul Lockout. The thing with the lockout, like I was saying, is the bar is very low on him and sometimes they think after the squat, you get even lower if the bar moves at all and it's difficult to lock out. Well, Panna could tell you all about that. I wondered if it was the up and down movement at the beginning of the lift could that be. drew that blue card. And that might be it as well, might be it. Yeah, so. Can he make the correction? Let's see with this setup. There's pros and cons to that low bar squat. Ah, that looks a little more conservative. I think it's not as low on his back and I think he's make the proper adjustments. Let's see how it, how 215 goes for him. Now he looks up, right? I wouldn't question the lockout there. It looks better. It definitely looks better. And he didn't go up and down at the beginning. Yeah, no Is movement. Deep enough? Much smoother. On the board. Now, he's going to have to take a pretty aggressive jump should Penna hit 252.5. Kedrick handling him. And we see no reason that Penna won't hit 252.5. Yeah, 240 moved very well for Penna. Penna has a reserve in him that seems limitless at times. I can only imagine with a crowd like Sheffield behind him, what we might see. And there's a huge number of people that have come over from France. Huge French contingents in the crowd. Listen to the crowd chanting Penna. France, not a far travel to Sheffield. You would think some of these French lifters are at home. It's a breathtaking view right there for that shot, huh? And 12 and a half kilo jump. Penna has hit 260, but there are other days where 252 would be his limit. What days are going to be today? No. Well, that's the time when you really don't want to be proved wrong. I was confident he'd get that. It was an ambitious jump. Can he rally? See what happens here. He got shifted forward, didn't he, Joe? I think he did. I think he got out of position. You saw his elbows get come under the bar. I think he's going to take another crack at that, and he could well smoke it. Yeah, he got pulled out of position coming out of the hole. 
And if he can make some corrections, he'll be in a much better position to fight. Even Pena needs to be in proper position if he's gonna fight through a sticking point. And 265 for Carl Johansson of Sweden. We're right up against his PB. His best is 267 and a half. Little ways away from the squat world record, but he's probably not gonna take a swing at that. He needs these kilos. But he's a young man with a lot of heart. Junior world champion in 22, open world champion in 23. Yeah, very rare you see a junior world champion enter into the open in the first year, take the open world title. That was some work. It was, but he spent quite a long time right at the bottom. And if you notice, in contrast to Pena, he never got shifted forward. And that's yeah. what it is really, is staying in the pocket with your technique. And if you have to work for it, you can. And Tim Monogatti, 284, world record attempt on his second attempt. I think you thought that was probably going yeah, to be I the second so, yeah. attempt. His trainers look fantastic. The travel and the cut don't seem to have hurt him too much. Well, these New Zealand lifters who have a great travel, multiple time zones, came really early for Sheffield. Well, they're veterans of the game and they know what they're doing. The bar is loaded. Tim Monigatti, 284 kilos. World record attempt! And here he comes. He's got a rather high belt position. Records on the line and cash prices on the line too. This is worth 5,000 pounds to him. 5,000 pounds for five seconds work. Well, and all the training yeah. he did leave it into it. <laughs> yeah, easy for me to say, right? Big brace. That looks good. Whoa. Yeah, it was tough, but I think he's got it. He gets so tight that even when the work comes and he's rumbling and reverberating, you never really thought he was going to lose it. Look how tight that brace is. And he's working through here, but never lo never loosened. He's probably close to the top, though. I w I, it's going to be a much smaller jump for his third. And 297.5 for Delaney Wallace. Delaney has previously hit 305, pacing for that. And if he wants that total world record held by Russell Orhe, he's going to need this. I was very surprised by his opener. Now I've seen his training, knowing that he's been injured, I was very pleasantly surprised by how well his opener moved. Yeah, and that's the thing, nobody's seen his training. So we just had to take his word for it that he'd be ready. We knew he was dealing with injuries, but seemed surprisingly confident if you bumped into him at the hotel earlier this week. The way 282 moved, looks like he's got reason for that confidence. Let's see how 297.5 moves. And he was so close to the total world record last year. So close. We know he's capable if he's 100%. Wow! He's back. Delaney Wallace is back. Delaney Wallace making easy work at 297.5. And I do believe We'll see around his PR loaded once again because he paced beautifully for the world record last time, just missing it by an inch on his last deadlift. And Kaiko, 297.5, stays on the bar for him. Teammates. Kaiko as focused as I've ever seen him this week. You know, some people you come, you say hello. Today, I seen him and I knew he's so in his own. I'll yeah. talk to you after, yeah, kind absolutely. sir. Absolutely. Giving the don't approach me vibes, I'm in the zone and that means he's ready to fight. Let's see how 297.5 moves. His best, 305. But that was a couple of years ago now. Let's see if he's pacing to turn back the clock. Now it's a tough one. He, would you give him another seven and a half pounds? You know what, I talked to him. Um, it was definitely work. Five kilos is probably there. Yeah, 302.5. 5. 
the thing is, when it comes to Kaiko, he's so good at knowing how much he has in the tank. Again, his success rate, so high, has gone nine for nine so many times with international judging on top of that. So we talk about his consistency, but of course that's the absolutely perfect attempt selection he's doing there. Gustav Hedlund, 315. And Gustav made Wait, easy work Ryan, at 300. They've overturned Kaiko's lift. Oh, wow, that's a surprise. And the crowd lets the jury know they're not in approval, like and I didn't see any infractions myself. He, he was, uh, he got one red for depth, I think. I think it was depth. Well, that boosts the other 93s. Yeah. Kaiko, who never misses on his second attempt. That is unheard of for Kaiko to miss a lift on his second. I've seen him put 300 in for his third anyway, but. Now, if Kaiko misses his third, he's really far back. 315 for Gustav, and now the 93s have an opportunity here. Could can Gustav close. take it? Yeah, I think he can. 15 kilos barely slowed him down. Three white lights, so the jury cannot intervene. They can only jump in if there's at least one red. Yeah. Gustav slamming the door shut on the jury. And the battle of 93s just got a whole lot more interesting, didn't it, Joe? And of course, that's exactly what you need to do, put it beyond all possible doubt. And here we have a man who has had this squat taken off him before. 331.5, Gavin Eden forever chasing this squat world record. Held by all-time great Anatoly Novopismani. Gavin wants to be amongst those greats, solidifying himself in history. Can he do it? We know he's strong enough. We absolutely know he's strong enough to move the weight. And he looks fired up! With Kaika missing, this opens the door for Gavin. All these 93s have revenge on their mind. Sheffield 2024, this story is already unraveling, different than we've ever seen it. So previously he's missed the world record on his third, so he's decided he's going to take it on his second. And I'll tell you what, I'm privy to some behind the scenes footage and he should be good for this. It's on the line. It's, he's got it to the top, but what do the referees think? It's three three white, white lights and the jury cannot intervene this time. Three white lights and Gavin Aiden has finally done it. Finally and done it. Finally put it beyond all reasonable doubt. Whoa. Letting everybody know it this time. He said he wanted it on his second. Some people thought it was foolhearted. And Gavin Eden gets the last word. And what a turn of events with Keiko missing his second. Eden hitting it. Gustav hitting. Now. Carlos Peterson Griffith wants that to be a short-lived record with 332.5 in the battle of the 93s already living up. This would be incredible to come into this competition and take a world record from Gavin Aiden. The plucky underdog, neither intimidated nor impressed by his adversaries, loading up the world record. And that was no easy world record. That was Anatoly Novakis Menyi's squat world record. Yeah, it's not just anybody's world record. Jury says they say it's good and hate it or love it. The underdog is on top. Three white lights and Carlos Peterson Griffith makes a statement in the second round of squats. Wow! So they both have another. Oh, we thought he'd lost it at that point. <laughs> pushed on the through. determination on that young man. And 20 kilos for Tony Cliff, a 20 kilo jump from his opener, 350 being loaded. And Joe, this has already been a historic squat session. It really has, but this is Tony Cliff coming out on his second attempt to match his best ever squat. The crowd chanting his name. Whoa, 
Oh! It's tough though, but I think he's got it. Listen, he's got the British crowd behind him, taking his personal best on his second. And Tony enjoying the fruits of his labor. Well, he spoke, uh, he spoke about this, didn't he? He said he just wanted to be out on that stage. And speaking of Anatoly Novopismani, he watched his 93 world record get taken away. He's got an opportunity to best his own world record as well today. 355, 362.5 is the record. We're getting close, Joe. We're getting close. He, he added a bit to the record in Malta. Can he push it out further today? Representing Ukraine, Anatoly battling through injury. 340 moved well. Talking to some of the staff here, they pointed to me, look at, I'm looking at these openers. That is not injury openers. But the heart on Anatoly, when you're an all-time great like him, you find another gear when you're at an event like this. And don't mind that shaking. Yeah. He always shakes like that off of his walkout. Wow. And that record is going to get loaded. Three white lights. We've seen him do amazing squats and made it look hard and then added weights and made it look hard. That looked easy. And here we are. We're over a thousand pounds already. 455 being loaded for Jesus Oliveras. And you're starting to see us creep up on that 477.5. We're getting close, Joe. Yeah, I think he will take, well, we'll let him do this squat first before I give him another squat, but I would have expected <laughs> him to do 478 on his third. Michael Davis, Joey Flex, he's surrounded by his team. They look confident. Jesus Oliveras, crowd favorite. And why wouldn't he be the strongest man that ever lived? It's a privilege to watch him do his thing. Is a huge weight on the bar. And that moved like a second. There was a time when a thousand pounds was on just unimaginable for Jesus Oliveras. It's an easy second attempt. And that was an easy second attempt. No doubt in my mind that as a minimum the world record is gonna go on for his third. Look at how, look at his toes coming off the ground. He snapped that up so easily. And Kyoto Ushiyama, 240. Kyoto missed 215. Wondering if he'd probably take his second attempt or third attempt weight. I'm guessing that's around his projected third. Previously, he did 247.5, so maybe slightly under what he maybe, was projected Maybe third. split the difference between right, the two. Right, and I'd, I'd be okay with that because if you miss your third, Falling right back to 215 is going to be difficult. Both him and Pena not having the squat session they had previously thought they'd have. But all is right if you hit your third attempt. He's still tracking well for the podium, but he's got to hit this. Yeah, the pressure is on for the 266s. We knew it would be a battle. It's an untidy battle, but it's a close one. Gets a little bite of the weight before he walks it out. Well, that bar oh, sunk has badly on him. It did slip. That slipped really, I'm wondering if he, that bar slipped almost all, look at that. Yeah, it was nearly off his back. I don't yeah, know if he'll get that. I don't know. Wow, okay. Two to one, he gets it. I'm going to wait for the jury. I'm going to wait for the jury. It was um, it was tight. If we see on the replay, this bar slides right yeah, down his down back. His and he looked like he hesitated due to it. Hard to see depth. It's very difficult to hit depth when the bar is moving on your back like that. But I think the bar was out of control. I think it was slipping down his back before he racked it. But the jury is not moving. They're happy. The bar is loaded. Penna, 252.5. Can he rally back? So is he just out of position or was it on strength? 
Ah, he doesn't, like doesn't quite seem as fired up coming out to this one. Does not address the crowd any. But Kyoto was able to come back, and perhaps Pena can too. We thought on his second attempt, he was pulled out of position. If he could stay in position, he's got plenty of fight in him. But that's a big hit for 252.5 on your back. Let's see how he manages it. Oh! Oh my goodness! Can he do it? Can he go? Oh. We thought we were going to see that grind that he's so famous for. But that really hurts him. Yeah, that's going to set him back a bit. And for a second there, we thought he, the Miracle Man was going to pull off another miracle. Hits Depp and pushed through the previous sticking point. And he used up a lot of energy failing that. 270 for Carl Johansson of Sweden. Five kilo jump, nailed 265 in his second attempt. So I think this is smart attempt selection. Small PB. Yeah, Carl probably estimated he's gonna fall behind in squats. But we all remember his come from behind victory at Worlds. He's got a monster deadlift. Yeah, three white lights, and Carl goes three for three in the squad event. And that was perfectly selected there. Yeah, I'm going to say he's pacing rather well. They're getting all the kilos out of Carl and setting him up still. For, look at Yeah, he struggled. That was perfectly timed. Yep. Another two and a half kilos might have been too much of an ask. 288.5 as Tim Monogatti of New Zealand looks to best his own world record in the third and final round of squats. He's gonna need all these kilos, show. Yeah, he's only four and a half kilos up, but his, he had to put some effort in for his second. He's currently behind Johansson on projected. And this is where Tim's gonna gather a lot of his total. Excellent squatter. But if you've been paying attention to his deadlifts, they've arisen. He might have a surprise for us, of course. Doesn't tell the full story. Is he maxing out on squats before he hits those big deads? Because he sure is today. But even if it was fresh, it was a, it was a surprising. He did 345, was it? That's right. Training? Come on, Tim! Oh, wow. Oh, that looks as easy as his second. And Tim Monogatti looks like he has more in the reserves. I take it back. I think that deadlift will be there if he needs it because he has the energy left. I think so. I expected that to be harder and he made short work of it. The battle continues for the 74s. I would love to get Taylor Atwood's feedback on that one. Taylor in the building watching this unfold working media he'll be interviewing these gentlemen and 300 kilos loaded for Keiko now 297.5 overturned by the jury going up two and a half kilos from there if he misses he falls back 15 kilos and the door really swings open for the other 93s he cannot afford to miss this if ever there was a do or die squat this is it but if ever you have a do or die lifter it's Keiko Keiko, always a fan favorite. As nice a guy as you're going to find. An impeccable resume. This is the weight he's finished on at his last four competitions. It's a consistent weight for him. Just needs to sink it. That looks good that to looks me. Better. Yes. That looks good to me. I think so. See if the, and he, <laughs> three white lights, and the jury cannot intervene. Keiko breathes a sigh of relief, back on pace, the battle is back on. 
Now, is that where he wanted to finish with 300? Because the other 93s are a little stronger. Yeah, I think he would have uh, wanted to put a few more kilos on that. He will have the bench press event next. And he's obviously a fantastic bencher. 305, Delaney Wallace. This will match his previous personal best. And his previous personal best was pacing him for that world record. Can he keep pace? Here he comes. He's really surprised me today. In a good way. All heart, all heart, gold shoes, back-to-back -back gold medals at IPF Worlds, two-time world champion. That world record in the 83s has stood just a little too long, if you ask Delaney Wallace. He's gonna need this. Maybe he's gonna hold pace. Depth for sure. Yes. That looked bang on to me. Excellent, absolutely super. Three white lights, if I'm honest, he probably had 307.5, a well-deserved victory dance for Delaney Wallace. I love those victory dances. He said, I think I've recovered just in time. And it looks like he was right. We're gonna find out in squats. Well, we just found out, didn't we? 325 for Gustav Hedlund. 315 was the second attempt. 320 is previous personal best. Like we said, Keiko, five kilos below his personal best. Gustav, five kilos over his personal best. What does that tell you, Joe? The fight is on should he hit this. It really is. And again, Gavin Aiden, always he's chasing that world record. Hit it on his second attempt. The 93s, so close right now. On a day that Keiko's vulnerable, the other 93s seem to be leveling up. Let's see if Gustav can hit this. If he can, he can really challenge for the podium. Oh, wow. Great squat from Gustav. Three wide lights. Again, the jury cannot intervene. And that's clean lifting by Sweden's favorite son, Gustav Hedlund. Whoa, 337 by Gavin Eden. He's strong enough, we know he's strong enough. He needs to keep that focus, execute perfectly like he did in his second. A lot of people stopping him saying, there's rumors you're gonna go for the world record in your second attempt. Please Gavin, exercise caution. Gavin throwing caution to the wind, attempting on his second, takes it, 337 for his third. Mr. Burn, your ships has arrived. And if you smell the smoke, it's already too late. Just the same as the last one, Gavin. We've never seen Gavin this strong, nor technically on point with his squats. If he holds serve for his third, he should hit this. He's had a taste of being a world record holder now. Looked in the pocket. The crowd likes it. The jury, the judges. Two to one. Two to one. Two to one. We all brace ourselves for a jury intervention. Gavin celebrating with the crowd. No, I'm going to watch the jury. The jury oh. do not seem to be interested. Nobody's moving. And it looks like it's going to stand. And Gavin Aiden extends the world record once again. And the story on Gavin Aiden, if he goes three for three in squats, he's a problem. Could this be the day, Joe? I will, it might well be. We, uh, we've never seen him do this before. We've never seen him hit these numbers and we've never seen him hit this consistency. The problem is we've never seen Gustav hit 325, nor has Carlos, who's risen to 332.5, now has 337.5 on the bar, emerged like this. This is a 93 battle for the ages. Relative newcomer to the international stage, he looks right at home. Carlos said, the pie has already been baked. I'm here for my piece. Only five kilos more than his second.
And of course, it's the man who walks away with the record that takes the prize pot. Oh, not quite. Gavin Aiden collects that money. I think he didn't quite turn it around fast enough. He just lost a bit of power in the hole. That's a real shame. But if we're honest, breaking that world record, collecting those kilos towards his total, he already has a sliver of that pie in his pocket. And his name goes in the record books. He held the uh, record even if for just a few minutes. His name etched in the history books and 355, another man looking to etch his name in the history books. Tony Cliff has the total world record in sight. These five kilos will help him build that case. As the British fans receive him onto the platform. Chance of Tony. He's been lifting since he was about 14 years old. And he's pushing 40, so do the math there. Probably a best known lifter. Oh, Tony takes another five kilos. Two to one. Two to one. Hesitating, I wasn't certain of the depth. But it looks like two to one, that's a good lift. Three for three. And Tony Cliff building a case for that world record and Anatoly Novopismani, two-time world's best lifter, coming out for 363 kilos, looking to break his squat world record in the 105s. He set this in Malta and I think he's looking in better shape today than he was in Malta. It's all heart, he's coming in injured. I asked him, based on your openers, doesn't look like he injured. He said he is, but he's gonna load it up regardless. That's what legends do, rising to the occasion. He's a resilient and determined lifter. Now he's gonna shake when he walks us out. Don't be alarmed, he always does. He's just revving that engine. And it moved well, was it depth? I'm not sure. It's gonna be close. Three white lights, three white lights, and Anatoly three for three in the world record. So I think we're on that angle we were watching, we're looking upwards. It does make it seem, uh, the squat seem higher than it is. That was a great lift from Anatoly. And 478, loaded for Jesus Oliveras. This record has stood far too long by the legend Ray Williams. I remember when this record fell, nobody thought it'd be taken, but here we are, Jesus Oliveras, 478. Can he do it? I believe he can do it. 2,000 pound squats, same day. I think we've run out of lead plates at this point. Yep. And the crowd, is Hush waiting to see him hit the platform. Expect the chance to hit once he's in view. Let's just make sure everything is perfect for that. Are you History in the making, Joe. You can see the bend on the bar already. Here he comes. Here he comes. Hey Zeus, chance around the arena. And I can't see the stage anymore. The crowd are on their feet. Thank God we have monitors. The crowd is on their feet. Everybody wants to see him hit this. 5,000 pounds for the prize money is the least of it. Struggling to get it under control, but he's there. Big brace. Oh, and he muscles it up. Absolutely. Does he get it? Two to one, the strongest man alive. Jesus Oliveras breaks the squat world record. Now that looked good to me. I know the jury do have the ability to overturn that, but I'm looking at them and they're not moving. That is a world record.
for Jesus Olivares. And that will conclude the squat session as we look at the standings. Agata, Corolla Gara, and Leah Babwa is your one, two, three with Evie and Carlina coming in fourth and fifth. Obviously, a lot of lifting left to go. And we'll take a peek at the men's squat standings. Kyoto, followed by Jesus, Anatoly Nova Pismani, and then Kaiko and Headland. Oh, wait. Sorry, this is on the projected, not the this squat. Is the yeah, yeah. This is on the projected, of course. And the battle is so close, Joe. It could go anyway, but of course, Jesus takes the bigger jumps. Don't count him out yet. Yeah, Jesus, the favorite coming in, and a lot of fireworks left to go. Don't go anywhere. We'll take a short break and be right back with the action. Hello, I am joined here by Sunita. Thank you so much for joining me. And wow, what an incredible squat session. First ever woman in IPF history to hit 300 raw. How are you feeling? I feel amazing. I feel, I mean, this is what I trained for and I'm happy that I was able to do it out there on the Sheffield, at Sheffield at, uh, in Sheffield. Incredible, how was the atmosphere? That was crazy. That was amazing. And uh, yeah, it's uh, an experience that you only have in Sheffield. <laughs> you seem buzzing. I don't want to keep you too long. I know you're warming up for Ben, so best of luck for you. And I know Thank everyone you. at home is rooting for you as well. Thank so you. good Thank luck. You. Thank you very much. All right, so we have Mr. Burn Your Ships here. Just hit a world record squat. How are you feeling? I feel good. The job's not done, obviously, but I feel good. This is a long time coming. It's less than I was gunning for, but, man, we had the worst water cut of my life. We, were, we weighed in an hour before lifting started. So for me to be able to recomp, feel the way I was feeling, and push through, um, I mean, this man knows better than anybody. It's a heart of a champion, and it's not easy. This is hard, and I think... When you surround yourself with people who reinforce you, people like my uh, my coach and handler Ray, my mom's in the back, you're mm -hmm. here. I mean, you can't fucking lose. It's in it's in here and it's in here. I love I love the emotion. So coming now into this this uh, event, you you were struggling on that third squat. I mean, tell me how, how does it feel to now officially hold that world record? Uh, it doesn't feel that great, honestly. I got two to one on that third. So that could have been overturned. That's not good enough. And it's also less than 340 with a chip. Our goal, my goal, was to come in, hit what I hit for that second, so world record on the second, and then hit 340.5 for the top, which would have been 751. And I know that's what my body is capable of. Of course, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face, right? And so it is what it is. But, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too proud of it, but I am happy that we were able to accomplish what we've been trying to accomplish for, for several years now. No, that, that was a great squat. I'm sure you're feeling confident heading into uh, bench, but what can we expect heading into bench now? Just the train, man. Train keeps rolling. You know, just going to try and be as strong as I can be, stick to the plan as best as I can, and that's it. All Not right. much more I can do. I don't want to take up too much of your time, so I appreciate it. Congratulations thank you, again. Thank you, dog. Thank you, thank you. And if you like what you've seen so far, stay tuned because we have the bench press coming up. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> I'm already messing up. Um, so, long story short. Sheffield is the biggest powerlifting event ever. The biggest powerlifting event in our sport. The biggest competition. The biggest powerlifting competition. Best athletes in the world up against each other. Where you have to 
break world records. It's the greatest go against the greatest. It's basically a battle of champions. Best of the best. The best of the best. The best athletes in the world. The strongest lifters in the world have come together to break world records. Greatest event, uh, just like uh, an Olympic uh, sport. Uh. That gives me a reason to strive for every single day. Sheffield is the meet of the year. It's the biggest thing in powerlifting. Just a group of 24 of the greatest powerlifting athletes. Right? Pound for pound, straight up, no, no weight classes, nothing holding us back. Who is the strongest overall in the world? The atmosphere and the, and the buzz for being in that room, uh, I just needed to be on that platform. It is the best championship in the world. There are the top athletes in the world. The goal is simple. Who's the best? It, it doesn't get any more competitive than this. We can share like the platform with like the our favorite lifters from like the men and the women. Literally everything that I had hoped for powerlifting to be. It's electric out there. And to me, being here and being invited to Sheffield, it's a great opportunity to prove what I'm capable of. Uh, it means everything for me to be here. For me to be in Sheffield is an incredible thing. So Sheffield is a big goal that I try to achieve from uh, here. Being at Sheffield is a huge honor and it means that I've reached a level that I never really thought was imaginable. It feels so different to the first time. So it's a great honor for me to be here at Sheffield. It's an honor just to be invited. All the hard work and everything that I knew I was capable of has truly come to fruition. I think Sheffield provides the opportunity for me to really push the boat out, to be a little bit more risky with my attempt selection. It's the most honorable thing for me as a powerlifter. It feels very special. It's like a huge honor to be here again. I think what it means to me kind of extends beyond the platform. For me, it's an opportunity to push myself to the absolute limit and beyond. I made a promise to myself that this year I would be here as an athlete. We remember just sort of like looking up at the people at the top and just saying, hey, like, I bet you can't get there. It means the world and I'm excited to be here. Almost unreal because I never thought that this would be possible. It means a lot to me because uh, uh, hard work, uh, perseverance, uh, passion put me here and able, able to qualify me to get here. Being able to take part in the competition, it's, I mean, um, there's, there are no words to describe how I feel about that. <laughs> it's very competitive out there. I surely am going to go out there and put out the best total I possibly can and put on a show for all of you guys. To go beyond my limits and to inspire people to do the same. To come back a second time is just getting to live, I think, any powerlifter's dream. And I'm going to give it all I got. Um, I promised my wife that we'd get a new kitchen for the dwell. <laughs> so it probably means a lot to her too. So, what I want to accomplish at Sheffield 2024 is, is besting myself, really. Ah, I want to be the best. I want to win. I want to do my best. I didn't just come here to compete, I came here to win. My goal is to win. <laughs> my goals for this competition are to increase my total PB and to prove that I am one of the best lifters in the world. I want to break some records, win, and I hope my performance can help popularize powerlifting in Poland. I came extremely close, inches away from breaking the, the all-time 83 world record, and it's, it's, it's about time, it is my time, and so it has to be done. My job here as an athlete is not just to execute and not just to perform, but it's to show people what it means to give everything. Uh, to revitalize powerlifting in Asia and contribute powerlifting more become uh, mainstream. Over the years, it's always been my goal to keep pushing the records and do what I know I'm capable of. So uh, it's a lofty goal, but we're feeling stronger than you know I've ever had. Proving myself how strong I am and how powerlifting has helped me in my life, not just by lifting a barbell, but being confident and happier and just being more of myself. I'm gonna give the fans, my family, um, everyone who expects great things of me, like, great effort. My biggest goal is uh, to win, clearly, and um, achieve records and uh, win the battle of uh, 69.
I would like to, uh, not just marquee myself, uh, but able to elevate the sport, uh, just like how it is developed uh, here in the European Hemisphere, also develop it uh, locally in Guyana. My goals for the tournament this week is to actually also be able to push uh, powerlifting back home. This is um, what the sport needs to, you know, to get it out there. Showing up, doing the thing, and whatever happens, happens, is a big accomplishment for, for me. I'm really excited to compete alongside all of the women. I am, of course, looking forward to competing against my old uh, rivals, uh, Kaiko and Gavin. Um, but there are 11 new faces this year, and I'm, I'm really excited to share the platform with the likes of Brittany Schlader and Sunita. Yeah, I'm excited for my rematch with Carl at Sheffield. I'm really excited to compete against everyone here. Uh, everyone here is a world champion. Not really, because they are all great athletes. Everyone, honestly, everyone looks incredibly strong. I can't tell you how grateful I am to share the platform with the best athletes the world has to offer. I'm really excited for the 69 showdown between Agatha, Carola and I. I think we can push the world record really high on that weight class, so I can't wait. Obviously, there's a head-to-head -head battle between me and Jade in the 57, so I'm very excited to kind of rematch her. I'm very happy to compete uh, alongside uh, Evie and uh, Carlina. I very like them uh, because um, how they lift. I'm most excited to compete alongside my teammate, Sunita. I'm super excited about everybody that I get the opportunity to lift with this week. Um, obviously, I'm really excited to lift with Sunita. We are Good friends uh, at Sheffield. This is like a privilege to like share the platform. Like yes, yes it's it's exciting. <laughs> so first of all, that would be Jesus Olivares. Jesus. I always gotta shout out my boy Jesus. Jesus Olivares. It's always a privilege to compete against Jesus. Obviously, the biggest competitor will be Jesus. All of these guys are great. They're all phenomenal. But ultimately, like their lifts aren't going to make or break what I do because. What I want to do is what I've been working towards. You know? We are all great athletes uh, and I'm looking forward to compete with many more. How often do you get to compete with your idols? So 2024 as we get ready for the bench press event and looking at the openers here I got the shit go a bench phenom opening with 
146. Corolla Gara, 140. Obviously, that 146, a world record opener, Joe. How do you feel about that? Well, didn't Corolla Gara have 144 in? Has she dropped her opener? I think she might have dropped her opener. I think so. I think I looked, and she was on 144. Now, it's going to be very tentative approach here for Agatha because it's a bit of a hit and miss affair in opening with a world record. It is, and she did this last year in the 76s, and it took her three attempts to get one in. Looking at the men's here, if we have a second. We might have chewed up our time, and that's okay. But I'll tell you, Jonathan Keiko, Matt Gary had said, you have three things for sure. Death, taxes, and Jonathan Keiko going for a world record, and I'd be shocked if he doesn't as well. Me too. Noemi Alibur, 80 kilos for her opening bench in the 52 kilo class. Noemi, a 52 kilo legend. Multiple time world champion, world record holder. Looks a little bit awkward on the descent, but she pressed it easily. Yeah, on the descent, I was a stitch worried, but came from her chest pretty smooth. Probably just loading that weight. And Tiffany Chapon, 95 kilos for her opening bench. Tiffany has hit 100 kilos before. Her own world record is 99.5, so we're not too far away from that. Historically speaking, she's capable of breaking that world record. Can she do it today? 95 kilos will give a bit of a measuring stick for that. Well over double body weight at her best. Well, okay, look at if that's a measuring stick. I think we'll see 100 today. Yeah, it's probably gonna get loaded. It's only it five kilos sense. away. I it see. might get loaded next. And Zsa Jakob surprised a lot of people with their squat. 95 kilos loaded for her. Yeah, it surprised me. She broke the world record twice, 186 then 188. She's having a good day. Already won 5,000 pounds for her squat. But I think I counted up 13 successful squat world records in the women's. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> the tagline records will fall. That was no lie. That was no lie. 95 kilos for Jad. See how this moves. Pretty smooth. Oh, wow, really quick. Have her best at 100, but she looks like she'll blow past that today. And 97.5 for New Zealand's Evie Corrigan, returning champion. Now she hit 104 at New Zealand Nationals, but we know she was out of her weight class at that competition, and bench is the hardest hit by the weight cut. Now it'll be interesting to see where she ends up. Evie and Team New Zealand so on point with her attempt selection. Absolutely. So the best she's done in this class is 97 and a half. So we're not too far away. In fact, we're right on that. Can't remember the last time I, I've seen Evie miss a lift, if I'm honest. Easy. Trend continues for Evie. And 100 kilos being loaded for Natalie Richards. She's a great bencher. Not sure if she'll get close to the world record today. That's all the way up at 123. But her bench has been moving. Yeah, Natalie's pretty much a triple threat. You know, you have bench specialists, squat specialists, deadlift specialists. Natalie's game in all three.
easy, very nice. And handles 100 kilos rather easily. Up next, Leah Bavois, 110 kilos, the reigning 69 kilo world champion. Leah had a huge squat session. 12 kilo PB on squats, so we're expecting big things on the other lifts as well. Leah came into the competition confident based off the squats. We know why. Rightly so. She's one of the few lifters that is already past the world record total on forecast. And that those four lifters are the 369s and Evie Corrigan. Already pacing for history to be made, and we're at openers in the squat session. Now, this is where Leah gives away uh, a lot of weight, actually, to the other 69s. And it's not that she's a bad bench presser, but when it comes to Corolla Gara and Agatha Shitko, you have all time great bench pressers. Yeah. Shitko already has the world record bench in the 76s and the 84s, I think. And Gara has claimed records herself in a different weight class below Carlina Tonkatea 120 for opening bench. And the record here is Agatha Shitko's at 153, so we're, I don't think we'll get close to that one. We used to leave some records for the other 76s. Carlina three for three in the squats. And in the squat event, seemed to get better and better as the week got heavier and heavier. She hit 600 kilos in the first 76 do so at the Commonwealth Championships. Been chasing that and looked to surpass that ever since. And seems to be pacing well to do that today. No drum at all there. 122.5 loaded for Amanda Lawrence. Tina Tornado doing a little bit of handling duty. Amanda missed her third squat, but broke the record on her second grabbing her first bag of the day. Now, best bench so far is 132 and a half. We're 10 kilos away from that right now, so let's see how this one goes. Bench looked well in training. So did her deadlift. It's okay to miss one of your lifts. If she goes three for three in bench, three for three in deadlift, you could still see an overall record. Smiles, makes easy work of her opener. Another one on the board. And that's what your opener should be for, really. Just get on the board, make sure you are solidifying the squat world record you broke the first time around, because you have to put up a total, you have to put up a good number in every discipline in order to take that record home. Yeah, we've seen disaster strikes. Somebody breaks a world record, doesn't register a total because they bomb out before the end of the meet, and that record does not stand. And Sunita with 140 for her opener. Now that's a big opener for Sunita. She's uh, done 142 in the past, 142 and a half. So this is a huge opener for her. Her squat went up 20 kilos. Let's hope her bench press has the same kind of progress if she's opening so close to her previous PR. I haven't seen nearly as much bench no. footage in her training. No, I haven't. I don't think she's shared hardly any bench. Oh, and she hasn't shared much deadlift, to be fair. Flying a little blind here, but if the squat is any indication, she's seconds. stronger. How much stronger? Okay, well, a lot stronger. Quite a lot stronger, yeah. <laughs> a lot stronger. We're not even close to the end. And 140 stays on the bar for Corolla Gara, 
She's broken world records in the bench press herself. Phenomenal bencher moving up to the 69 kilo class. And we are just four kilos away from Jen Thompson's world record that stood for seven years. Yeah, well, it's an interesting world record because the weight class only came into existence a few years ago. So no one else has ever held that record. It was allocated to Jen Thompson because she was in the right body weight. Uh, but no one has actually broken the 69 kilo bench record yet. The rest of the world is caught up now. Gara just four kilos away. Shitko looking to best it on her opener. Wow, yeah, that record is very much a Severe danger. danger yeah. <laughs> Severe danger. Takes no major effort, and Gara struts off the platform with ease. Agatha, 146 in history, about to be made in her opener. Agatha, just a phenom of a lifter. Was a teen or barely out of her teens when she took her first world title has been a perennial contender ever since, always hitting the podium. I think she's been silver medalist the last two years in the 76s. And moved down to the 69s, and what a 69 kilo debut she's had so far. Can she collect her first world record as a 69? Now, I think this is the lift she's been the most inconsistent on. She struggled with elbow depth, and I've saw in training, her butt was off the bench a few times. Yeah, the irony. Inconsistent with the bench, but so strong in it. <laughs> and three white lights. Nothing wrong with that. We thought we would never see the day this record fell. And here we are, a junior taking this record. And she has fixed those problems with elbow depth. That, that looks phenomenal. Yeah, that depth is right on point. If she could carry pace with that, she'll be just fine. Agatha. Already breaking history in her opener and 147.5 for the reigning world champion, Brittany Schlater, representing Canada. Biggest opener for the women. She's hit 155 before. She did 155 in Malta as part of a winning strategy. Going over the liftoff. Let's see how 147.5 moves. She might be able to best her previous bench. Brittany also a three lifter. Sometimes you have specialists, sometimes you have total specialists. And, and there's she a, is a great all rounder. Yeah, there's a reason why she's a world champion. Some people fly under the radar and might not pick up the world records along the way, but that total is what counts. And Noemi Alibert, 85 kilos. We are on the second round of benching for the women's division. 52 kilo great. Just two and a half kilos off her best. Yeah, already searching for a personal best on her second attempt. Or, sorry, we're uh, no, two, she's two and a half kilos under her kilos. personal best. Yeah. came early, waves she it off. She looked a little uneven. She looked like she was having trouble getting her right arm down. So I wonder if she's just dealing with a, a bit of an imbalance or injury there. 100 kilos even for Tiffany Chapon. That's the world record, is it not? Um, 100, yes it is. This is the world record. Five kilo jump, and that's a big jump for a 47 kilo lifter jump. It's a difficult one, isn't it? Because if she went 97, 97 and a half, she might use up all the energy she needed for it. I, yeah. I think it's a smart move. And, and it was fast. In this particular situation, there's no other 47s that are just breathing down her neck here. However, it is a battle with every single other world champion in the mix. She has aspirations for a big total and didn't like how that rack height looked. Backed out of it. Looking to back double into it. There we are. Quick adjustment. A little bit of drama before a world record attempt. Well, hopefully she had the clock reset and that's not still ticking down. If 
sure I would have heard the speaker say if we were short on time. Oh, we are short on time, but she's made it. And Turbo Tiff looks like she hit that world record. Yep. Three for three in only her second attempt. So she has 10,000 pounds in the bank already. A successful day for Turbo Tiff. 10,000 pounds, two world records. And we're only two attempts deep in the bench press. Jad Jacob also will attempt 100 kilos even. Back to back France. Well, back to back to back. We got Naomi Elibert in the mix as well. I've been really impressed by her today. Yeah, those squats really woke everybody up. We've seen her do great things in training and kind of missed the top end on the platform before. Well, she's not missing today. Fantastic. 100 kilos move smooth, just like a second attempt should. And Jad Jacob is on point today at Sheffield. In the polls that you did, Ryan, I think that Natalie Richards was a long way ahead of Jad. Well, Jad's tracking ahead now. I said it before, I'll say it again. Jad lost to Joy Namani at the World Championships, and Sheffield was a revenge proving ground. She's starting to turn into a bit of a world champion slayer here at Sheffield. She could do it again. 102.5, though, for Evie Corrigan. This will be a weight class PB. And it moves easily. There was some question about how much of the strength she could take down from a 484 total that she did at 55 kilos body weight. But it looks like she's taken most of it. That's trouble for the rest of the field. In 107.5 for Natalie Richards. Natalie had a sensational world's performance going nine for nine, taking the best lifter award. And she made most of those lifts look easy. Yeah, she had more in the tank as she Cruise to a world record total, seven and a half kilo jump for her here, and this would pr this would be uh, tying her personal best. And she's right pacing for a personal bestseller. That was easy work of 107.5. I think so. She's definitely got another two and a half. Maybe another five might be a bit risky. You start to tire on your third bench. Leah Bavois up next, 117.5. Her personal best previously 115. And we know what she did to her previous personal best in squats. How far can she push it in the bench press? She was always going to be behind the other two 69s in bench. So she's just going to be adding as much as she can to a total to come back strong on deadlift. Yeah, she's really trying to hold serve. Throw kilos onto the total, but not looking to come anywhere close to any world records or try to keep pace with their bench attempts. Leah opting to wave off the, the handoff here. And that is an easy personal best on bench press. It's great to see her looking so strong after coming into Sheffield injured last year. Yeah, this is a redemption meet for Leah. And 125 for Kalina Tongatea, the 76 kilo queen. 
This will match her previous personal best. Be nice to see Carlina hit the 600 and break through it. Well, she's been creeping ever closer to the 600 she did at the Commonwealth. Got 593.5 last year at Sheffield, 593 at Malta, and 597 at New Zealand Nationals. You think we'll see a breakthrough the 600 today, Ryan? She appears to be pacing. If she hits this, she she did better on her squat. About yeah. to tie her personal best on bench if she hits this. I think she can do it. Yeah, certainly setting herself up for it. Wow, well, okay, the answer's yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Unless the wheels fall off, we're gonna hit 600 and well beyond that. Four kilo goat, Amanda Lawrence, 130 kilos on the bar for her seven and a half kilo jump. Two and a half kilos below her previous personal best. Broke a world record in the squats. Yeah, she hasn't gone over 130 for the past couple of years. So hopefully we've seen a return to maximum strength for her today. Her One squat was a little down on what we expected from her training though. And that was a little surprising. Her training was, has been looking fantastic. We'll see what she does with the bench press and the deadlifts. You're not gonna always hit all your lifts. I don't know if you know if she cuts weight, Ryan. Not a lot. Okay. Not a lot, it shouldn't be a weight cut issue, but. She's probably got another two and a half kilos in her to tie her personal best. Do you think she loads a personal best? I would only put two and a half on that for sure. I would hold serve with another two and a half myself. Yeah. See what we could do on the deadlifts. And 146.5 for Corolla Gara. As Gara looks to take that world record from Egata Shitko. Gara, the reigning 63 kilo world champion, moving up a weight cap, moving up a weight class, and not filling out that weight class either. No, but this is probably the heaviest she's ever weighed in at 67.17, and this is the heaviest bench she's ever attempted. Gara, world champion in and out of equipment, world games, and now a Sheffield appearance. A living legend. Oh, it moved fast off the chest, but it hit a real sticking point. Able to break through it, collects herself a world record. Three white lights, but the question needs to be asked. How much further does she want to go? It may be that she, if she hits that really hard off the chest, she can just push through that sticking point. So we need a 147.5 kilos on the bar. Looks back at Agatha and gets a smile. That's got to be good luck. Into PB territory already for Sunita. Seven and a half kilo jump from her opener. Personal best bench, should she hit it. But how hard must it have been to refocus on the competition after becoming the first woman in the IPF to hit 300 kilos raw? Wow. Doesn't seem to have bothered her. No. Yeah, you're right though. Um, oftentimes you have that adrenaline dump, the adrenaline goes so high, it's such a massive milestone and to rally back. And I got the shit go, 152 for her second attempt. Broke the world record, had the world record taken from her by Corolla Gara, 
looking to take the world record back and grab some more kilos in this super tight battle of the 69s. But not only that, the 69 kilo battle winner is likely a favorite for the overall as well. Absolutely. And she's done 153, but she did that at seven kilos heavier body weight. As we said before, Bench is the one that really suffers when you drop body weight. Let's see how she handles 152. Who <laughs> handles it with ease, I'd say. And it appears as though Agatha Shitko has found her new home as a 69. You think she'd stay? I uh, think I'm... she uh, likes the food a bit too much. <laughs> if I was a consultant or advisor, I would say you found a new home. Put up the sold sign. 152.5 for Brittany Schlater. So that means Agatha has the Benish Press World Record in the 69s, the 76s, and the 84s. That's incredible. A bench press legend. Five kilo jump for Britt. Five more kilos to her total. Sunita started to pull away a little bit on the projected totals, so Brittany's going to want to get as much as she can out of her bench. That was nice. That's a good leg for Brittany Schlater. We're into the third round for the ladies, and we are loaded the bar for the 85 kilos for a second attempt at that weight for Noemi Alabama. She did not get it last time, and that is because Team France were not allowed. And Noemi Alabama. Retaking 85 kilos. Missed this on her second. Can hey, she make uh, some adjustments? She's got the crowd behind her. Team France are shouting from the audience. She has hit this in the past. But she looks a little awkward even on her opening bench. Much better. <laughs> it was so much better. Much, much better. And it shows a lot of heart yep. to miss a lift, come back and hit it. And 101 kilos for Tiffany Chapon, looking to break the world record she took on her second attempt. And put another kilo on her total. This could be a good example of differing strategies because you get prices for the overall, the total, uh, how, what she break the total world record by, but she could collect 15,000 pound in world record prize money today. And Tiffany Chapon goes two for six in the squat and bench, but still breaks the squat world record and still breaks the bench press world, world record. Collecting 10,000 pounds in those first two events. And Jad Jacob, 102.5 for her third and final bench. Two and a half kilo personal best, should she hit this.
just took a while to get the uh, start command there. She's moving her feet, but it's no go anyway. But she didn't leave anything behind. She got the most she could on the day. She got 100, failed 1 or 2.5. Yeah, it's two and a half kilos. We'll see how that affects it. And Evie Corrigan, 105 kilos, two and a half kilo jump for her. This will be a personal best, Joe. She's five for five right now. I think she went nine for nine last year. She did. Very consistent lifter. Went eight for eight at Worlds. But only because she didn't take her, yeah, final deadlift. She rarely misses, and that's why she keeps winning. but it went all the way. Yes, Three white lights and Evie Corrigan, the returning Sheffield champion. Be interesting to see where she ends up. Should she be able to win it all or podium again? You know how difficult it is to do back-to-back -back Sheffield titles. And 110 for Natalie Richards, the 57 kilo world champion, two and a half kilo jump from her second. And of course you allude to it, if you knock the total world record up by a lot to win Sheffield, it's so much harder next year. And Natalie, that should be three for three, and it is three white lights. And she's got a deadlift. Yeah, she hasn't missed yet. She went nine for nine at Worlds with room in the tank. Should she be pressed and need to load up, she should have plenty of energy left over. 122.5 for Leah Bavois. This will be a huge PB for her. Yeah, came into the event. 115 as her personal best. Seven and a half kilo personal best in bench press. And the women's division is huge. <laughs> That's incredible. Well, she's not done it yet, but I, right. I wouldn't put it past her. Should she hit it? She is projected to be right behind Agatha Shitko. The 69 kilo queen. Should she lose that title, it won't be without a fight. And she's got a big deadlift. She can cover a lot of ground in that event. Wow. Attempt selection right on the button. Right on the money with that attempt selection. 122.5 move very well for Leah, having the day of her life here at Sheffield 2024. And 127.5 for Kalina Tongatea. Two and a half kilo jump. Two and a half kilo personal best should she hit it. And you know what that means, Joe. You might see her go over 600. I believe she's forecasted right now. She gets this at 600.5. And that's just with a deadlift over. That was a great third bench. And that moves smooth, three white lights. Carlina really putting a spread between her and all the other 76s in the world, especially with Agatha leaving the division. 
who can emerge to threaten Carlina? We'll have to wait and see, because right now she's reigning supreme. She is, but I think Agatha is only moonlighting, you know. I think she'll be back. 135 for Amanda Lawrence. Personal best, Joe. How yeah. do you feel about that? Um, I, it's hard to tell, isn't it? Ben, you run out of energy so quickly. You can absolutely smoke your second, put a tiny bit of weight on it, and fail it abjectly. But she's not done as much as we thought on the squat, although she has looked very strong. Oh, wow. A couple Look of moments good. of uncertainty, but she got it to the top. Look good to me. And listen, she broke a squat world record, did not hit a personal best, but got a personal best bench press. We're back in PR territory for Amanda. Let's see what happens in the deadlifts. I think she's brewing a massive deadlift. 150 for Corolla Gara. Broke a world record in her second attempt. Agata took that world record and upped it to 152. Gara saying, you know what? You could keep that world record, thank you very much. I need the kilos for my total. And I like it. Don't get pulled out of pocket. You're right, it'd be really easy to get caught up in chasing records here, especially when there's a big prize on, on at stake. Bagara, being a veteran as she is, knows there's a bigger picture. And that's how you throw kilos onto the bigger yeah. picture. It's incredible to see someone who is one of the top equipped lifters in the world performing at this level in the raw as well. And here comes Sunita, 152.5. Five kilo jump for her. This is another lady that's uh, extending PBs all over the place. This will be a 10 kilo increase on her best. That's a massive increase yeah. on bench press. Sunita Mula having the day of her life at Sheffield 2024. Where is this total going to end up? I was just looking at the forecast. She's, this will give a 99.9% .9 of the world record. That's just with her opening deadlift. And with her opening deadlift, she'll be at 693. We're probably going into the 700s at an IPF world's level. That's difficult to do. Oh, not quite. It was a brave effort. Well, that's a first miss for Sunita. She doesn't look too upset about it. Yeah, started coming out on even. That left shoulder was sticky and just wouldn't lock out for her. And 154 for Agatha Shitko of Poland. Two kilo jump from her second. Agatha coming into the 69 kilo class, all types of questions, could she retain her strength? So far, the answer is yes. Will she break the bench world record for a third time today? Could she drop a weight class and get a bench PB? That would be incredible. Oh my goodness. She had more. Can you believe it? Dropping a weight class and hitting a personal best in bench. That's incredible. And she's gonna be difficult to defeat today. But it's a stellar cast chasing her. Brittany, 157.5. We have questions about Agatha's consistency. She is answering all those critics today. She's six for six. Looking at the projected. Bavois, 567.5. Gara, 565. Oh, that is so close. Shitko, 586.5. <laughs> Britt, 157.5.
What a lot can happen in the deadlifts. Sunita missed her third. If Brittany could hit, she'll pick up five more kilos. And she's got a small PB on the squat. This will be a small PB on the bench. 25 seconds. Pull up. She could bench herself just outside of 10 kilos on the forecast of Sunita. And 10 kilos is not a massive ask to cover ground in the deadlift event. And looks like she's done it. Yes, believe. Stays within the hunt, and the battle continues. It ain't over yet. See some great work by the coaches, picking the right numbers, and some phenomenal work by the athletes. Yeah, it's Bryce Krawcheck of Canada. He's lifted at several worlds himself, broken world records. And we begin the men's bench press session. Pena will open us up with 160. The reigning 66 kilo world champion. Now he didn't have a great day on squat, so how is that going to affect his mindset, Ryan? Pena often battles back after missing lifts. He can leave it behind him. He's got that type of focus. It's the reason why he's won two world titles. But a little more of a question mark might be why did he miss that? Where's yeah. his overall strength? He seemed really confident coming in, but his squat just did not show up. Yeah, the demeanor changed a little bit coming up for the third. 160 moved well. Penny is at 172.5. Kyoto Ushiyama, 162.5. Kyoto misses opener, retook that. Ended off with 240. But considering that he missed his opener and probably ended up with a, a squat lighter than he expected, he's forecasted in first place. Wouldn't that be a surprise? <laughs> well, he's got a long way to go in his competition yet, but yeah. that's where the forecast is right now. That would be a story. Can you imagine? Now, even if he doesn't win it all, he's already doing great things and exceeding a lot of expectations. 162.5 for his opener. 172.5 is personal best. Typically takes quite small jumps on bench. Moved well. Yeah, looking good. In 165 for Tim Monagati. Tim breaking the world record in the squat event. He's hit 185. That well, was well, in the 83s though. Ah, yes. So I was just trying to track down to see where he'd been in this weight class and I think it's 170. Well, we're pretty close to that, just yeah. five kilos off. Now, Carl lost a little ground to Tim on the squats. He's probably going to gain some of that ground in the bench press. And then come deadlifts, we're probably going to be neck and neck. And then we got ourselves a good old-fashioned deadlift battle. 30 seconds. The personal best that this body weight is coming. Yeah, he looks in great shape. Not sure what that yellow card failure was. If we see a replay, we might... I'm not sure I no, saw it. Yeah. 172.5 for Carlos Peterson Griffith. And Carlos admitted on the podcast here that the bench press is his Achilles heel. He said he's going to go for that squat world record, and he got it. He has a massive deadlift. 
If you follow his training, he's hit 362.5, 800 pounds for a double. So a big deadlift is waiting, but he's gonna lose a little ground on the bench press. Well, when you deadlift 800 pounds as a 93, that can erase a lot of mistakes, can it, Joe? Absolutely. And it's the power play as well, isn't it, having a big deadlift? And especially if you're close to a record, you can pick exactly the number you need. Yeah, he's gonna lift last, so he'll determine his fate. He just wants to gain as many kilos as possible on the bench press. And you can see how far that bar had to move there, very yes. long arms. Yeah, he's got deadlifter arms, that's for sure. And that's why, despite the small bench press, he's confident, because he knows what's waiting in the deadlift event. Absolutely. Now, Kelly hasn't shared much of his deadlift singles recently. We know Tim Monagatti's made great strides on deadlift, and that was Calais's big weapon. Yeah, I've seen Carl a 340 single um, about a month out. I'm not sure, I haven't seen singles since, so to your point, I'm not sure where he ended off. 177.5. The world record total in the 74s, 800 kilos, and that's held by Shell Bucklin of Norway, who was in attendance tonight watching. He was ready to step in if anyone couldn't make the platform. Did not get the participation, but He's going to see a little preview of what awaits him at the World Championships. Strong. Look good. Three white lights. Three white lights. Three white lights. Three white lights. Makes it look like an opener should. And Delaney Wallace up next, 192.5. Now, Delaney has hit 200 kilos even. We're just seven and a half kilos away from that. We might see his personal best matched in a second. And again, the story on Delaney hunting down that world record total that eluded him last year by an inch. And every attempt he gets, he gets an inch closer. You know, Ryan, he's never opened this high on bench. I wonder if he's gonna load up a personal best in his third. I think it speaks of a lot of confidence to open higher than you ever have before in a situation like this. He looked great in the squad event. He said, I'm going to know where I'm at strength-wise based off of squats. Well, squats moved fantastic. And he has quite the setup on every single one of his lifts. Wow. Very strong. So another seven and a half kilos, should he go? Or what do you think, Joe? 200 kilos even was his previous personal best. I'd, I'd say 200 for the next, I think. That seemed to move pretty well. Again, that'll have him right on the money for pacing. And actually, if he hits his third, give him a little wiggle room. Yeah, Sheffield last year when he was so close, he got a 200 bench that day. 192.5 for Gavin Aiden, Gavin. Middle that world's in the bench press. Gavin is definitely a subtotal lifter, but his deadlift has come a long way. But I think this is quite light for him to open on. I wonder if he's just trying to cement that squat world record, make sure he gets one in. Yeah, he's hit 220 before, and speaking with his coaching, squats have been going great, deadlifts have been going great, bench has pretty much been where he's always been right. and I think they're going to be cautious to your they, point. They never all three go up together do they? Wow. Well unless you're Leah Bavlov. Unless you're Leah Bavlov. <laughs> okay yeah that was. Yeah, just being super cautious. Good. Yeah, If that was a struggle we'd be in trouble. That is no struggle. I'd be comfortable with a nice jump over there maybe what do you think? 202.5? I'd go higher, uh, 205, 207.5. He's pushing, he's strong, he wants to push it out. Yeah, if he's gonna, he doesn't want to lose too much ground in the bench press event. And again, if he's healthy upstairs, he's got a big bench press. Gustav Hedlund, 197.5. Gustav has hit 217.5, 20 kilos off that. And Gustav, a phenomenal squat session. 
body like a Greek god. If Gustav goes nine for nine, he's gonna be very difficult to beat. And Team Sweden are precise with their attempt selection. I was about to look to see who the bench press world record holder was, but of course it's Kaiko, isn't it? And that was smooth. He's got plenty of room to grow there. I can barely hold back a smile. 217.5 for Anatoly Novopismani. Broke the squat world record in the squat event. Anatoly, massive squat, big bench. Not the biggest deadlifter, but it all adds up to what could be the total world record. He had a go at the bench press world record, actually, at the Europeans in Estonia back in November. And he didn't quite get it that day, but he wasn't far off. He's currently at 233.5, Rennie Keiki. Wow, that was smooth, Joe. I would expect to see him track for a, a, a go at the world record again on his third. And of course, of course he will. It's worth £5,000 to him. Yeah, the incentive is there. And Jonathan Keiko up next. 235, 243 is the world record, of course, held by Jonathan. And I'll repeat Matt Gary. Three things are guaranteed in life. Death, taxes, and Jonathan Keiko's world record on the bench press. It's been so reliable a weapon for him. He broke the record again in Malta, and it was so easy. It was such an easy lift. Well, he's been challenged here today. He's really going to have to pull all the stops out. Yeah, the, the rest of the field are hitting PRs, and Keiko left the squat event not hitting a PR. But a lot can happen to the bench press and the deadlift, and Keiko is a fighter. That was nice. Easy. I think the reliable bench press world record is in sight. He got a blue. So that can either be for soft lockout or for up and down movement. I didn't see his left arm, you know. Just got a flash of his left arm unlock unlocking. Ah. We don't usually see that from Kaiko. It might have been a little too quick and fast on, on the way up. And Probably just a one-off thing. Talking about bench press world records here. Tony Cliff is probably going to take a swing at that. Let's see how 240 moves. Definitely will. I think regardless of even if this moves badly, I think he's going to have a go at the world record. <laughs> you might be right. You might be right. But he's one of the best benchers in Britain. He's got the ben British record in so many weight classes. Oh, he's not happy. Tony telling right. the fellas, check that rack height. That's not what I asked for. You know, I could hear the chants from the crowd. I thought he was getting up to acknowledge those. Tony taking a second to rewrap his wrist wraps, collect himself. And Tony, the veteran he is, it's going to be pretty hard to rattle him. Absolutely. There you go. Not super easy. He did 250 recently in a comp a few months ago. It wasn't super easy, but yeah. again, it's, uh, you know, the setting up twice, rewrapping twice. and You can see on his face, though, he was a little bit thrown. It didn't move as well as he wanted, though. I do think you're right, though. I think that world record is getting loaded regardless. Yeah. Tony knows the Brits came out, and he's going to give them a show. Speaking of giving a show, Jesus Oliveras. 255 kilos being loaded. Jesus has gone over 600 pounds previously. 
601 to be exact, that's 272.5. Huge expectations on this guy. He set the biggest total ever done in knee sleeves last year. There was some talk that he might set the biggest total ever done even in knee wraps this year, but that is a big ask. He is a living legend. We haven't seen a man of his talents in history. Wow. Okay, so his best is 272 and a half. We could well see 275. Yeah, when you're as large as Jesus and your bench is that big, 10 kilo jumps aren't very big asks. And the way that moved. Consulting with his coach Joey, and here's Penna. We're at the second attempts already. 10 kilo jump for Penna. This is just two and a half kilos below his personal best. Considering how squats went, it's a bit risky, but I think he wants to cover ground. It is a bit risky, and you're leaving a lot behind if you don't hit it. This is the type of situation, should Penna hit, he covers ground and starts catching up. Should he lose, the door might start to close on him. But Penna's not coming here to come second in 6-6 six six or anybody. Absolutely, but he's on projected, he's 12 and a half kilos behind. So he really needs to hit this to stay in the fight. Penna is the type to push his chips to the middle to the, of the table and start taking risks. He will not shy away. We need to get under that bar pretty quickly now. Here we go, probably the best bench grinder in the world. High risk, high reward, and Penna, 10 more kilos in the bench press from opener to second attempt. Huge bench on him there. That was much needed. If Penna didn't hit that, he would have been too far back. Now he is within striking distance. Kept himself in the fight. And Tim Maragatti, 170, stays on the bar for him. Take the smaller jump than Calais, and he's lagging a little bit. Yeah, five kilo jump for Tim. But for Tim, he knew he's gonna come out, gain some ground on the squat, lose a little ground on the bench, and then we'll decide it on the deads. And this is the most he's benched in this weight class. Haven't seen a lot of his bench prep, but his strength That's levels exactly. are definitely riding high. I think he's due a PB today. Yeah, that move just like a second attempt should. And it applies pressure on Carl Johansson of Sweden, the reigning world champion. Johansson and Tim tying on body weight at Worlds, or sorry, tying on total and losing on body weight at Worlds. Tim would like a little bit of revenge. Kyoto Ushiyama, 170 for him. Penna hitting his second attempt bench. Applying a bit of pressure to Kyoto. And he's looked in much better form than he did last year. Last year he came in hot off the back of Japanese nationals where he'd done some crazy numbers. It didn't go too well for him. I think he's been a bit more conservative in his prep this time. Yeah, the scouting report on Kyoto, if he could tighten up some technicalities, he could have a monster total. We're starting to see that unfold here. It was a little bit sticky. 
It was sticky. I don't think I saw an up and down. I don't think so. Three white lights. It was untidy. It was definitely on the line, but it might have been a misgroove. Who knows? Let's take another look at this. Kyoda. Yeah, I saw sticking, but not up down, I don't think. Not up and down, but I, it looked heavy. I don't think he's got too much more. It'll be interesting. Prop, no more than two and a half kilos, obviously. 182.5 for Carlos Peterson Griffith. Carlos said he wanted to get into the 400s, and here we are. Opened at a personal best bench. So the bench prep has gone wild. He said he's been working very hard on his bench press. Did not expect to be contending with the others, but thought it wouldn't be as much of a drawback in a chink in his armor, and it looks like his hard work is paying off. Let's see, 10 kilos. 10 kilos up from his opener, 10 kilo personal best. And those are deadlift length arms. Wow. No question that the disadvantage is your bench, but he moved that way very well for a 10 kilo PB. Look, that hard work on the bench press has paid off already. 10 kilo personal best, and he's got more in the tank, Joe. Yeah, I think he has. Expect his total, like, start adding up what that total's gonna look like. And he said, if you see my total at Worlds, throw that out the window. I'm much stronger now. He already has he's proven that. proved that already. 185 for Carl Johansson of Sweden, reigning 74 kilo world champion. He won in multi with 182.5. He's done one eight seven and a half in a bench only comp at home in Sweden. Yeah, Tim's strength levels have arisen, but so has Carl's. Oh, oh. oh it looked like it was going, but just hit a wall. I'm sorry, no. You know, I think if he comes back and takes that again, I think he's got a good chance of getting it. He just seemed a bit slow off the chest, didn't get the drive he needed. Now we've seen today people miss, come back and hit. Certainly not out of reason. And Delaney Wallace, two and a half kilo personal best. We thought he might tie his personal best, 10 kilo jump. Wow. He hits this, definitely pacing for that world record. Thought he might have left a little bit of kilos on the table and squat. Looked like he's picking up those kilos in the bench press should he get this. Given where his training's been since the last Sheffield and since Malta, actually, this is an incredible comeback performance. Yeah, he was hiding his training. Right. Very okay. open with having faced injuries. Yeah. And if you ask them, he's like, I think it's turned around just mm -hmm. in time. And definitely has. You take that with a grain of salt because everyone tries to be positive coming into a competition. I mean, we can't call it a comeback because he never went anywhere. Oh, nice, nice quote there. Don't call it a comeback. Oh my goodness. Great, great bench for Delaney Wallace. A bench PR in his second attempt and he makes it look like a second attempt. And Delaney, Closer and closer to that 83 kilo world record. I think Delaney's already ahead of where he was the last time. Gavin, 205 for a second attempt. He's hit 220. Let's see how this moves. Last Sheffield, he hit 215. Depending on how this moves, I'm expecting anywhere from 215 to 220 for his third. He seemed a lot more contained at this competition. He's usually he's got his emotion on his sleeve. He's shouting at the crowd. He seems way more focused this time out. Until he hit that world record. Though. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll allow him that.
last year podiumed, pacing for another podium finish. Okay, well, Joe, Solid. 10 kilos or 15, what are you thinking? I wouldn't put another 10 on that, I don't think. Would you go up 10 from there? I think another 10 is probably okay. in the pocket. What are you, you're thinking 10 or? I was thinking maybe seven and a half. Seven and a half, okay. But I don't see as much of Gavin's training uh, as, I, as I might, because I'm not on TikTok. I know he shares a lot of, on TikTok. To be honest, he hasn't shared a lot of his bench press, though, a lot of his squat, right. but bench he kept to himself. 210 for Gustav Hedlund. Gustav, 217.5, his previous personal best. 12 and a half kilo jump, and that's a big jump on bench press, but he had a big PR on squat. Strength levels are high. I asked Gustav how he's feeling coming into this. He said if there's any small nags, it's in the upper body bench press. So let's see how 210 moves. So this match is the second attempt in Malta. He did 210 there. Now we can't hear the referee's calls, but was that too fast? Ah, uh, yeah, you beat the count. Yeah. Nice call, Joe. You didn't even hear it. You just thought to yourself. But I saw the referee's hand, and he definitely went before it. I mean, sometimes the uh, the command is out of um, sync with the motion. It's a shame because that yeah. moves so well. Yeah. But he's going to have to take that again. Anatoly, 227.5, the world record, 233.5. We're getting close. Anatoly certainly looks fired up. So we didn't expect Anatoly to be at full strength this time. He was kind of counted out in a lot of the previews because we thought he was injured. I mean, he says he's injured. He doesn't look too injured. Yeah, even when pressed about, look, those openers look big, my friend. He said, no, I'm injured. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to see him coming not injured. Ooh, oh, wow. Oh. I, no, didn't, I think that's good. I didn't see it down up. I saw some wavering. I saw some pause. It's two to one. It's good. But I got to think the end is right there. I don't know if he even needs to come out for another. That looked like a third. He's relatively close grip, which means that you run out of energy faster than with a wide grip. Once you hit the limit, it's hard to get back from it. Kaiko, 243.5, a world record attempt on his second. Now, I think this is unusual for Kaiko. I think he usually chips the record on his third. So I'm wondering, is he feeling a bit of pressure from the other 93s and he wants to cover some ground on the bench? Oh, if he's just feeling really good. He's definitely under pressure. Yeah, it's very rare you could pull Jonathan Kaiko out of the pocket. He's usually so consistent. World record on his second attempt. Be in interesting to see how this moves and where he goes on his third. Well, maybe he's making up the ground from having missed a squat. He was definitely lower than he expected on squat. Bench press, is a, it's a tough event to cover ground in, though. It really is but he's a great bencher. And one of the greatest of all time. Yeah, he probably has a bit more room. A couple more kilos in there, I think. <laughs> the streak continues for Jonathan Keiko's bench world records. And how many more kilos do you think he has, Jeff? At least a couple. Moves quite well. It was a little bit slow. It's obviously very heavy, but he's uh, definitely got a couple more there. Oh, here we go. 253.5 for Tony Cliff. We thought he'd attempt the world record. He's going for it on his second. 240 was a stitch more laborious than you think for an opener. Yeah, I, I would have expected it to move a little bit faster than that, but we have no doubt that he was going to load it up. Tony's not one to back down. No joking now, he is ready for this. And the demeanor on Tony has changed. 
all business now. Whoa. The crowd is really behind him. Dennis Cornelius' bench record set all a time ago. Was it 2017? It was a long time ago anyway. That's a lifetime ago for powerlifting. Oh, oh so close. Nice catch, but he's got another attempt at it. But he used up so much energy for that one. It's going to be a tough call. We know he'll come out for it. You know, I, I don't know, he just got out of position there. His foot moved, his hip moved out. Maybe if he gets that absolutely perfect, he can hit it for his third. Jesus Oliveris with 275 loaded, and this is a personal best for Jesus. 272.5 is his previous personal best. 606 pounds already. And most of the uh, previews had him at 275 or 277 and a half. So he clearly thinks he's got a lot more than that. 20 kilo jump on bench press. Wow. But look at this mountain of a man as he steps onto the platform. And he's a crowd favorite. So the record is this, it's Ilias Booglum, isn't it? 291.5 from memory, I might have that slightly off. I don't think he's taking another 20 kilo no, jump. I let's don't think he is, <laughs> but let's see how this moves. Oh, whoa, oh, oh my goodness. It, it looked like it might have just arced God, a little towards yeah. his face a stitch yeah. early. I think so. I'd expect him to put that weight on again, and I would expect him to get it next time, to be honest. But that was interesting, because where did he expect to end up loading that for his second? See, it came forward, I think, a little early on him. We'll see if he can control it a little better. Pena, two and a half kilo jump from a second. This will tie his personal best. 170 was work, but I've seen Pena grind 15 seconds on the bench press. You don't often see grinders on bench, but he can grind on bench like no other. Now he's fired up. Yota's loaded the same weight, which would put them both on the same subtotal. Super tight, it's gonna come down to deadlifts. grinder and he wants it and he wants it bad three white lights for the grind king how is that even possible when penna needs to find that other gear he finds it and the battle continues and he tells kyoto as he passes by i'll see you in the deadlifts whoa are you kidding me those spotters had to be patient and not grab the bar because several times it could have intervened. And Kyoto looking to match that as we have a bench battle in the 66s. Whoa, is he fired up? Stalking that bar is Kyoto. Rarely do you have a bench session this lively. But here we are. He has hit this before. And he does have the deadlift advantage. So this will mean he's really evenly matched with Hannah. A subtotal, but then he has the advantage on deadly. Well, at least historically, but anything can happen on any given day. Oh! Wow, it was untidy, but... Oh, as scrappy as anything, but did he jump the command? Couldn't hear the command. Oh, he might have. I think he did. 
If we can see the replay, I think that he um, yeah. went a little bit early. We can't see the ref's hands and we can't hear it. Hard to tell. Yeah, it is hard to tell. Well, it's two and a half kilos. So well, we're very tight on the 66 kilo battle, aren't we, we are. Joe? And I can see the coach is still at the jury table. Yeah, Kedrick approaching the jury table as he should. They got a white light. You're allowed to approach the jury, have the conversation, see if he can get that extra two and a half kilos. It's two and a half kilos less he'll have to pull. And 175 for Timothy Monagati of New Zealand. The jury declined to change that result. So here's five kilos more than he's done in the 74 kilo class. But he has looked great today. Ooh. No, and you had said, look in the bench press, the wheels fall off pretty yes. quickly. And take another look at this. Off the chest quick, but Brakes come on fast, and Carl Johansson, the reigning world champion, missed 185 on his second attempt, but looked good, at least partially way through, and we thought maybe some small technical adjustments, and you might get it. He definitely looks a little more fired up for this one. So given the opportunity to pull away from Tim a little bit, Yeah, Tim, in the projected, it's close, but Carl, of course, opening 10 kilos more in the deadlift, historically had a bigger deadlift. And there it is. And looks good. And talk about heart. Callie Johansson <laughs> making those adjustments. He needs to be careful there. Ah, I don't think they'll take it from him. No, this I is Sheffield. I don't think they were. This is Sheffield. Hey, what a battle bench press has been, Joe. It's been, usually, it's a little bit of a, the, the atmosphere comes down a little bit for bench and ramps up for deadlift, but we've seen so many great benches and world records here. Carlos Peterson Griffith hit 182.5 in his second attempt, 190 now. Previous personal best, 172.5. If he hits this, talk about improvement on that bench press. He has really showed up for Sheffield and leveled up. And his second was fast. It was moved really well considering the distance it had to travel. Broke a squat world record. If people were looking past him, leading at the Sheffield, they're not now. And he told everybody, I'm amongst the elite and I'm going to prove it. Come Sheffield. That is a long press command. I think he was still sinking. Oh my goodness, talk about a fight. Pena must be proud somewhere, he's smiling. This is insane. Wow, I've never seen anyone fail so close to lockout. Just couldn't get his right arm straight. Carlos has heart, you gotta give him that. He came so close. My goodness. Look how deep the elbow depth is there. And that was a shame. I think there's a couple of dips as well. I mean, oh, he's such a fighter. My goodness. He's got heart. It's just so close to lockout. And Delaney Wallace, 207.5. Wow. Seven and a half kilo personal best. Delaney definitely has that total world record in sight. It might really surprise people where he ends up. Could he hit the top five? Could he hit even higher? He's already surprised me with the numbers he's put up and he's looked in great shape. This is massive for Delaney. Delaney Wallace is not a man you want to look past. Two-time world champion for a reason and looking to right the wrong that Sheffield 2023 was.
It's going. Oh, wow. Let's see what the judges say. Huge PB for Delaney Wallace. Three white lights, and that's a massive personal best. It's got to be said, he missed the world record by one inch on his last deadlift. Now he has to deadlift seven and a half kilos less. Will that one inch be there? He's ahead. I think he can do it. Today might be the day for Delaney Wallace. And Gavin Aiden, 212.5. Now, Joe, you had said seven and a half seven kilos. And a half, yeah. Sounds reasonable. Yeah, I know it's down on his best, but that, that's what his second looked like to me. I think this is a smart call. Up in squat, down in bench. And I'm told the deadlift is going up. Let's see where he ends up. Pacing for a podium finish like he did last year. Nicely done. Really light touch on the chest he has. Hell. <laughs> So elbow depth from the middle and a yellow card from the side. They should protest. You got one weight, you might as well have the conversation. It's worth the kilos. He's talking to the TC, yeah, but he, he needs to get over to the jury. There he's he heading goes. over to the yeah. jury right now, yeah. Ray handling him. No, Two. The jury don't have the replay to look back at that elbow depth, so hopefully they were paying attention the first time around. 215 for Gustav Hedlund. Opting to go up despite missing 210. Two and a half kilos below his personal best. And I told you, coming in, if they thought there was any situation they need to be wary about, it's the upper body. Had a fantastic squat, squat session. If he leaves bench press with 197.5, he's behind. Now, was it good stuff that jumped the command? It was a command jump, but the press looked good. Yeah. I can understand why they've gone up then. Let's see. I want to see if his butt stayed down. It did, two to one. One of the refs might have he breathes a sigh of relief. <laughs> no, I Woo -wee. don't think we get the replay from the side view, so he won't see if his butt came up. It looked like one of the refs might have called him in the butt raise, and yeah, you can't even see the hips. We'll take his word for it. There didn't look to be too much movement there, though. No, no. And you're allowed to look at one cheek can come up. That's fine. Yeah. 2.30, wow, Anatoly Nova Pismani, two and a half kilos, he comes out, 227.5, look like as much as he could handle. This is under the world record, but two and a half kilos towards his total. He might let the clock, clock wind down. I think he is, uh, and I, I think, think this is, is a good idea. Right. We yep. both thought 227.5 yep. was the limit. On the limit, yeah. I think this is a really good call. So when a, a lifter puts their attempt in, it's considered good manners so that the other lifters don't have to go again more quickly. And especially when you've got such big, um, big benches coming up, two world records coming up. So it's polite, really. It's sportsmanlike to leave that attempt in. And Keiko, 245.5. We both said he probably has another two kilos in there and he's moving up two kilos. Sounds about right. And then we have Tony Cliff coming out to retry the 253 and a half. He missed on his second. And I do expect him to come out for it. Such a tight battle in the 93s. Wow, yeah. And we have Gustav Hedlund ahead of Jonathan Kaito. Is that even if he gets this bench? Uh, so Gustav will have 870. And Kaiko, yeah, he'll be in the lead of Kaiko. Wow. And Gustav also has a bigger deadlift opener, and to, historically speaking, a bigger deadlift, which means, I mean, that this is a huge upset. This would be a monstrous upset. But again, we knew Gustav Hedlund was capable. He was an inch away in 2021, has been looking for revenge ever since. He was a star in the making 2018, a junior and won the world title, out totaling everybody in the open. Very rare you saw that. That's the quality of Gustav Hedlund. What a story it would be if he pulls off an upset, but Keiko is a, he's a battler. 
It really would. He's ended up just behind so many times. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. This could be his day to be the bride. Then, of course, we have Carlos and Gavin still in the hunt. 245.5. Two kilos doesn't sound like a lot, but when you got a battle this close, it's plenty. And it's a lot when you've just benched a world record too. I don't think we've ever seen him take two consecutive world records before. Could be wrong. Well, Team Keiko is under pressure, so they got to make this move. It's two kilos less left to deadlift. That was smooth. Yeah, I think he had, it didn't look any different, to be honest, to his second. It, it might have even looked a little better than the second. And it pays off. Keiko doing all he can. Yeah, he's got another blue card, but I think that's fine. I don't think he'll get that overturned. 253.5 once again being loaded seven years this bench record has stood by the great Dennis Cornelius and Tony Cliff looking to take it down he could also use his 13 and a half kilos towards his total if he gets it the total world record is within reach. This is kind of a two for one deal here. If he misses, not only does he miss the bench world record, but the total world record really falls out of reach. He could not have more support in the room. This is a pivotal bench attempt. Oh! Uh, no, no, no. Going. Valiant Watching. effort, valiant effort by Tony. And you knew he's going to go out on his shield and attempt both world records if possible. Yeah, absolutely. He was always going to come out like for that, no matter what kind of day he was having. And 275 kilos being loaded for Jesus Olivares. 20 kilo jump from his opener, missed it on his second. Looked like it might have just come forward to his head a little earlier than he wanted. See if he can make a little bit of corrections. That bar path is pivotal when it comes to the bench press event. Especially when you're right on the limit of strength, the slightest mistake will take it out of range. We've seen people miss and come back and hit. Did he rack it? Yes, and that, he no, what? He racked it. He racked it too early. Is that right? Yep. Oh, what a he shame. He gets to the top if you watch and he just throws it back in the rack. Oh, no. Gave away that beautiful attempt. He had it. All the work done. That is such a shame. You don't often see those mistakes from, from the elite lifters. As we take a look at the standings, I got the shit go first. Priscilla Bavois, Leah Bavois second, Corolla Gar third, and Evie Corrigan fourth. That is the one, two, three in the 69s. And we take a look at the men's. Kyoto Ushiyama in the, lead. in the lead. And what a surprise it would be if Kyoto pulls off the upset. Gustav Hedlund of the 93s, followed by Jonathan Kaiko, another upset, if you will, in the 93 battle. And Anatoly, who we thought was injured, pacing for fourth with Penna rounding out the five. But a lot can happen in the deadlifts, Joe. Please Absolutely. do come back. We're going to take a short break. There will be some interviews during this intermission.
All right, so we have Agatha Sitko with us, having a phenomenal day so far. Your opening attempt was a world record of 146. How did that make you feel? It feels great. Uh, that was the plan going into the meet. I was a little bit nervous because last year I did that and failed my first and second attempt, but we made sure that it would be perfect. Awesome, awesome. So your second attempt moved relatively easy, 154 kilos. Was that the number you were planning on hitting coming into the meet? Not really. I'm kind of disappointed. That's, that's how I finished. I wanted to hit 160, but yeah, my second attempt moved heavier than we expected, so we had to play it safe. All right, no worries, no worries. You're six for six right now. You're forecasted for first place. What's your mindset going into deadlifts and finishing the meet? Just got to finish strong and win. That's the plan. All right, so you guys heard it first. The world record holder for the bench press. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> I am here with Jonathan Kaiko, returning athlete to Sheffield after a bit more of a turbulent squat session than maybe expected. Got it back on your third and then absolutely smashed smash bench, you know, hitting the world record twice. How did that feel? How are you feeling? Oh, he just, I mean, it was great. I mean, the I had more on the bench. Um, the handoff, he kept making me hold there for like an extra five seconds. I felt like he'd, I'd done a rack and he'd be like, are you good? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, so, you know, uh, I, th I had a, I had a quite a few more. I think I was good for like 248, 250. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy for it. I'm happy uh, to get that right now. Um, that was a really big bench for me. So. Yeah, that was absolutely huge. Obviously, you only set the world record about seven months ago. So yeah. to progress that so quickly after has training been going well for you then? Yeah, bench and deads have been going great. Um, especially uh, bench really got the show out. Um, and I'm excited to uh, finish, up, finish up strong with deadlifts. Yeah, I yeah. bet. You're looking really strong today. And yeah. how does that fit, leave you feeling, you know, heading into deadlifts? It's good. You know, I, uh, you know, the squats didn't go as I anticipated. That's just how the game goes. You know, that's, you know we, all, we all miss our attempts here and there. So, um, but I'm just happy to come back. And I want to finish strong. Absolutely. Yeah. And I wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We don't want to hold you too long. Yeah, so I'm good luck. Lay down. <laughs> <laughs> best of luck to you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Yeah. And don't go anywhere. We will catch you for deadlifts very shortly. See you then. It would mean everything to me. It's the highest possible win you can do in powerlifting. Of course, uh, winning Sheffield would be an immense joy. Then I would be the best, period not because of weight class, not because of age, um, just the best. It would be incredible, but this year it's gonna be tough. It's the most honorable thing as a powerlifter. I get to capture my powerlifting dolly. Winning Sheffield would mean the accomplishment of so many years of efforts, dedication, and training. It would be the biggest honor, obviously. You never know, don't count yourself out. Last year, I said that it would mean nothing to me. This year, I think I'd be lying, not just to you guys, but to myself if I told you it meant nothing to win. I think it means everything to me this time. To win, I feel will mean a lot because I prepare so hard for this meet. After having competed internationally for 10 years, won the Worlds twice, um, it would be a nice cap on the end of a, a, 
you know, a 20 year lifting career. To win Sheffield would be a dream come true. I also want to prove to people that you don't have to be weighing 100 kilos and above to be able to be very, very strong. Uh, that would mean that I think I've made myself untouchable as a 76. It means you're the best, right? It, it means you're the, the absolute best, the king of the kings. Um, and so that means everything. It's, it's something that can't be taken away from you. To be able to stand amongst all of them, the best of the best, I mean, it means the absolute world to me. Yeah, it would be really something special. To win Sheffield would be like a dream come true for me. Maybe I'm crying if I win, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's everything that everyone else here is dreaming about. Yeah, it'd be beyond my expectations, but I think that's part of why this event is so important to me is because it shows me that I can do more than I thought that I could. Winning Sheffield uh, will be a great, uh, great, uh, not just experience, a great exposure. It's gonna set me on par above uh, many athletes, yes. Uh, winning Sheffield will be the greatest honor in powerlifting. It will mean a lot for me to win Sheffield. I don't know, I don't know, it's hard to describe it in words. It would just mean everything to me and allow me to not only elevate the sport, elevate myself and my training, but just continue to powerlift for as long as I can. And I need to prove to myself, prove to the people that love me and that support me, that care for me, that want to see me win. I need, I just need to be the best. I would like to dedicate my performance to my coach. I guess I would just like to dedicate my performance to everyone who supported me, like for years, not just this year where I got my invite and won Worlds, but like literally the last like five years, my friends who've been on my side, my uh, friends at the gym, the gym owners, everyone cheer me on. Thank you guys. My wife, she's a person who stood by my side, no matter what. My mother, who actually will be in the back with me, and uh, she's kind of my spiritual reinforcer. Uh, to Ukraine and to Ukrainian people. I would like to dedicate my performance uh, this week to my grandmother. Um, uh, she's no longer with us, and um, she was my life. I would like to dedicate my performance to all the people around me. My girlfriend, my coach, my parents, all the people who support me. I just want to dedicate my, my performance at Pana because he's my coach since three years. It's this guy. Um, this is a picture of me when I was five years old. And um, I want to prove to that version of myself that I am worthy of being where I'm at in life right now. To my wife and three children, Jack, Felicity and Freya, um, they put up with a lot with me uh, disappearing to go training. I would like to dedicate my performance to all the younger girls who didn't believe in themselves. My dad will come to see me lift at Sheffield and that means a lot to me. So obviously I have my dad in mind. I, I want to thank, you know, my family, my mom, my dad, my little sister, because they, they've poured a lot into me as well. I mean, even at Christmas, they're like, hey, I know it's Christmas, but we got to find a gym to get you to. I will dedicate my performance to my boyfriend and my coach. He never stopped believing in me, and so, yeah. <laughs> you have uh, my sister, she's also here with me. I would love her, uh, well, I give her the, the opportunity to be able to see what the real performance is. My mom, but she's not here. <sighs> my journey wasn't easy. I'm still going, I'm not giving up. I would like to dedicate my performance to my coach first, Stanley Odin, and to my club back at home in France, Lusco. I want to dedicate my performance to my fans, my friends, my family. I dedicate my performance to everyone who support me. It would be my family and my girlfriend and just everyone who's just been behind me, genuinely. I'm the first uh, male French athlete to compete at Sheffield, and so that one will be for France. I would like to thank my boyfriend for always pushing me to be better. As always, I would just like to thank my family, my partner, my siblings, my parents. A big thank you to everybody who's, who's um, helped me get here. 
over the years, I have to thank my dad um, for introducing me to the sport um, many, many years ago. I'd like to thank Nina, my fiance. Um, I wouldn't be here at all if it weren't for her. My wonderful students and my work colleagues who um, hold down the fort so that I can come and compete at these events. There's a lot of people I would like to thank. First and foremost, my family. They're there for me day in and day out. Also, my friends, uh, the fans out there. I honestly wouldn't be doing this without you guys. My lifting crew, all my friends that I train with. It's really great to have this kind of group where everyone just screams at you to hit the lift. So I really want to thank all of my team for their constant support during training. All of my friends I train with, uh, thank you, my coach, my boyfriend that uh, helped me uh, in uh, all that I do during the preparation, and uh, my family and my friends. The TSG team in general, because um, I have Ben, but I have Jason, and all like my mentor, Fred, Brittany, and the PT that helped me uh, when I was injured and everything. So, just the TSG team in general. Uh, yeah. I'm our energy. I would like to thank him. He's been in my corner through all the many years of powerlifting and sitting through many, many powerlifting meets when he is not a lifter. So I know that's probably not the most exciting thing for him, but. Well, my parents, of course, my family, all of my family, because it's a, a biggest support for me and my boyfriend, uh, Julien. Yes. Thank my parents for always supporting me and my partner, Veronica, who will be handling me on the day. And uh, I would like to thank my fiancé, Christophe. And also I would like to thank my family who are coming over to watch. They are, they are always very supportive. I would like to thank my, my gym family. They have supported me immensely and encouraged me. They have so much um, love for me and I'm so lucky to be a part of that community. And welcome back to Sheffield 2024. I am Ryan Sixpack Lapidat, accompanied in the booth by Joe Whiteley. And Joe, as we take a look at the standings, a lot can happen in the deadlifts. But so far, we have Agatha Shitko in number one, Leah Bavois number two, and Corolla Gara number three. That is 369 lifters. Evie and Carlina just rounding out the top five. But look how close it is. We have Leah Bavois, Carola Garrett projected on the same total on openers, and Shitko's only 10 kilos ahead. Anything could happen. Yeah, that's an easily mitigated in the deadlift attempts. And we take a look at the gentleman, Kyoto Ushiyama. And who would have thought we'd be here? But look at what we have pacing for first entering the deadlifts, followed by Gustav Hedlund in the 93s. Again, a bit of an upset for the 93s. And Tiffany Chapon, Turbo Tiff, opening with 160 on the bar. Tiff broke a world record in the squat, broke a world record in the bench. Not likely to break a world record in the deadlift, but might overall. So the total world record is 428 and a half, it's hers and this will give her 421 and a half. She is not far away. And that was easy. That is three white heights and a good lift. She looks Alabama. calm, cool, and collected. Noemi Alibert, 187.5. Now this is a big opener for Noemi. She's done 200. Yeah, not a heck of a lot of room, but 187.5 move well. Three white lights. Three white lights and a good lift. And now that we've got so much more to look for, we're looking at the total records, the deadlift records, and this is moving fast. Edie Corrigan, returning Sheffield champion. 52 kilo world champion, 197.5. Evie's top end deadlift, 210. I think 210 when she was in the 57s though. But she was a small 57. Let's true, see how this true, works out. True. 
And she's kept most of the strength down in the other lifts. Yeah. So this gives her the total world record, is that right? Is that 460, the total world record? Wow. That's quick. That's the total world record right there. That's 470. Yeah. And gives herself a small nod. Well, oh, that's how a world record falls overall. Carola Gara, 202.5 for her opening deadlift. And again, as you had said earlier, these ladies need to solidify their total with their yeah. opening lifts for all of their previous world records to stand. The total world record in this class is 549. This will give Corolla 572 and a half. It's incredible what these 69s are doing today. Adding tens of kilos with their opening pulls. I mean, this is just insane to be 572.5 with your opening pull and your opening pull looks like that. And Gara, by the way, moving up from the 63s, not even a full-fledged 69 kilo lifter. Natalie Richards, 205 for her opening pull. Now, Nat does have the total world record right now at 512 and a half. This won't take it yet. And this Jad has the deadlift world record at 231. This will give her 501.5. Jad opening at 215 will end up at 503. Wow. It's super tight, super close. Talk about a battle of the 57s. Plenty nice more. Nice and easy. Plenty of room. Here comes Jad Jack up 215. And as you had previously said, historically speaking, Jad is the bigger puller. I think she doubled something like 225 recently. Oh, she's looked great today. Really exceeded my expectations for her. Very interested in seeing how this moves. Is there a lot of room to grow on it? Yes, there is. Yes, there <laughs> is. Yes, there is. Wow. And they are one and a half kilos apart with Jad in the lead. Now, the bigger deadlifter historically is in the lead. Yeah. That's... That gives Jad the power. Jad, really good. She still this, has to pick the weight up. Oh, it wow. The strategic advantage. But um, Natalie looked like she had more in a tank at Worlds. She's going to need it. Leah Babois, 225. Now this matches Carola Garra's new total world record. Who's got the body weight? Leah has the body weight advantage. Oh, but of course that doesn't matter for the total world record. It's the first person to do it. Correct. What a battle, the 69s, the 57s. It's just, <laughs> everywhere you look, and Leah Bavo had a sensational bench press and squat sessions. If her deadlift is increased like her squat and bench press have. Well, judging by this number, 225 for a best of 231. Superb. Yeah. We're going well beyond her previous personal best. And she gave Ben Escrow the nod and Ben smiles. Load it up, sir. Load up the plan second. I got the shit go. 235, Agatha had a sensational deadlift prep for this. At one point said, oh my gosh, I think I'm turning into a deadlift specialist. <laughs> I think she's an everything specialist at this point. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a high opener though, 235, when the best is 240 in a higher weight class. Yeah, but I'm telling you, that deadlift has been flying in yeah. training. Yeah. And look at that. And she moves into the lead. She takes the total world record as well. 
pushes that up to 586.5. She's put 40 That's, kilos on the total world record. It's crazy because she's hitting numbers that would be her 76 kilo yeah. numbers. And she said she was going to come in for 600, and it sounded ambitious. Carlina Tongate at 242.5. Carlina had been chasing to get back to that 600 kilo total. With this opener, already it will be 600.5. This is the Carlina we wanted to see. That's the classic prep that Carlina does. No, it wasn't easy. A little bit of work, a little bit of work, but she's at least back into the 600s. A conservative second jump, probably best. I think so. I wouldn't expect her to see it take a big jump now. She's the only one in the 76s. I don't think she's got a huge amount left on that deadlift. Amanda Lawrence, 242.5. Amanda's deadlift prep has looked great. She's hit 268.5 previously. She's a little way off the total world record yet, but this is her, only her opener. And the deadlifts have looked great. Um, she's not going to get the clock stopped for cleaning the bar. She needs to be aware of that. The clock is still ticking. <laughs> she's not stressed. It's her opener. But you have the least to do on deadlift, right? You just have to pick it up. Easy yes. work, easy work. So do you think she'll extend her? She's got the biggest deadlift, uh, she's got the biggest deadlift world record at 268.5. be great to see that go up today. Yeah, it's difficult to tell off of openers, but at least to move quickly, there's a lot of room to grow. How much? We'll get a better indication on the second. And so Nita, 245 for her. Opener. This will put her at 693, Joe. Half a kilo off the total world record, which is Britney's. We look almost guaranteed to go over 700 kilos today, which at an IPF world standard, again, we're just breaking down barriers. Previously, she's hit 262.5. We're well below that, so this should move relatively easy. Very strong off the floor. It struggles a little bit of lockout, and that's what let her down in Malta. And she's up against Brittany in that fantastic battle. Whoa. Wow. Almost too fast. I think too fast. Is she going to get... She's not going to get that. I don't think so. That was so fast, she fell back. Yep. She yeah, I think that was exactly it. Let's take a look at this. I don't even think the slow-mo is going to slow her down that much. Take a look at this opener. 245 barely offers resistance. Look how quick that was. And she just went over backwards, what a shame. But I think she'll go up. She might as well go up. It might actually help her. Yeah. <laughs> right? Gain a little balance, 247.5. Brittany Schlater. Britt hits this, she's at 690. Again, with Sonita. Sonita's gonna go up five kilos, 250. So they are very close. Britt hits this. So you need to hit her second. Who knows what Brit puts in for a second. Very tight battle once again in the 84 pluses. Makes easy work. Ooh, a little off balance at the top Did as well. Did she put it down too quickly? I, I, it's hard to tell because I can't hear the commands. Yeah. She did. Yeah. No, oh it looked like word. it. And both ladies moving well but losing their balance. Yep. Wonder if she'll go up as well just like Sunita did. It was a little bit more scrappy, but it was fast off the floor, though, wasn't it? It was fast all the way to the top. She just needs to hold it for a second. Tiffany Chapon, 167.5 for her second attempt deadlift. Now, I know Heather Connor in the 47s really pushed up that deadlift record, but the overall total record is definitely within reach. It's seven and a half more kilos towards her total should she hit this would put her at 429. It would take that total world record yep. already. 160 moved well. And regardless of the placing then, she has got herself 15,000 pounds in prize money. Yeah, that's a pretty good day for her. 
I think that'll be a pretty good day for anyone. <laughs> Oh, wow. That was easy and smooth by Turbo Tiff. It was. She was clearly delighted with that. And I, why wouldn't you be? I would love to see Turbo Tiff take that total into the 430s here at Sheffield, wow. breaking new ground. Of course, tactically, that might not be your best bet because you don't want to push it up out of your own reach the following year. But when you're in front of a crowd like this, uh, let me tell you're going to come out for it. Turbo, Penalia, they're cut from a different cloth. Live for today. And Noemi Alibur, 197.5. 10 kilo jump for her. A little bit of work, but she's good for it. Noemi previously has hit 200. We're just below that. She might go for a personal best on her third and final. Evie Corrigan, world record deadlift, 208.5, Joe. She's going for it. I didn't honestly think we'd see this. This is Farana Farid's record that she set at, at the Asians. This will give her a 481 kilo total, pushing her temporarily from fourth to second place overall well, that's huge that's 20 kilos over her own total world record this is where evie could start to shock people winning sheffield last year pacing for a podium finish this year she just keeps upping the standard and meeting that new standard people question whether she could replicate the 484 she did at a slightly higher body weight and she's answering those critics right now yeah and she did that at a higher body weight home in New Zealand and the other side of the world. But Evie's built different. 30 seconds. With wow. ease, with ease. That was incredible. Three white lights. Moves herself into second place. Still got another round of deadlifts to go in the conclusion of the second round, but Evie Corrigan, defending Sheffield champion, 52 kilo world champion, stacking those kilos and those world records. And Corolla Gara, 212.5 for a second attempt, 10 kilo jump. But a moment it was super easy. And this will put Gara at 582.5. It is incredible the gains that Gara's made from her previous personal best. 557 and a half. Still a little bit below the 586 and a half that Akita has set the world record at. Corolla is tracking well for the podium. Now these 69s all clashing in this class. All of them are all-time greats. It makes easy work heading into 582.5. And that was a five kilo PB already. And she's not finished yet. Natalie, 220 loaded. If she hits this, she's at 516.5. If Jad Jack up hits her second, she's at 515.5 in the jockey position once again. But this Matt will be the world record total. Matt Gary is a phenomenal game day coach and has Natalie positioned to regain pole position. If it comes down to a close battle, she's got a great coach behind her. He's been in several of these situations. His record is impeccable and Natalie will execute if you load the bar properly. Well, that's she for did sure. a 227 and a half, I think, in training. 225 maybe? Yes, she has. I saw the 227 and a half. Yep. She rarely shows her top end. Oh, she's got much oh, more though, Joe. She's got much more good. though, Joe. She has. she has got the world record deadlift in the bag there at 231. I would not put that past her. Jad Jack up 227 and a half. This will put her at 515.5 and a kilo behind Natalie, who has more in the tank. Jad looked good with her opener though, 215. Oh, 215 moved well. 
Natalie able to regain the number one spot in this battle. And likely to dead after Jad, but let's see what Jad puts in. Well, well, okay. Nice to reconsider. <laughs> if you're wondering, Natalie's got 235 for her third. Jad might put in more. I don't know. 235. That's just a long way up, isn't it? It's it's. This is this is a game of chicken. Who's gonna load too much? Yeah, it really is. Jad has done 231. It's her world record. But 227 moves so quickly. It Would looked she like put in 232 and bank on. Natalie not being able to do it. Oh, they're putting in 236.5. Holy smokes. Wow. Leah Babois, 235. And we got battles all around. This will move Leah temporarily. This is the second round of deads. But temporarily into the second. We knew the 69s were going to be clustering around that podium. How it ends up really depends on how these deadlift end up. But Agatha Already in the forefront. she's done on the platform. This is four kilos up from her best, but she's been so far ahead on all her lifts. Now Leah can deadlift. So this brings her up as well, right behind Agatha Shitko. Agatha Shitko cannot afford to miss because Leah Bavois is on fire tonight. Yeah, that was a smooth second attempt by Leah Bavois. It was work, but there's still room to grow. How much? 242 for Agatha Shitko, loading up a world record. Agatha said, I'm starting to turn into a bit of a deadlift specialist. Taking Kimberly Walford, an all-time great, a record that stood nine years. Wow. And she says she's not a deadlifter. When you take records off of Jen Thompson and Kimberly Walford. And this will put her on 593.5. She told us she was coming for 600. It sounded ambitious. It's starting to materialize. Let's see how 242 works. But can you believe we were all blown away when Carlina in the 76s hit 600 kilos. I got the shit go. Potentially going for 600 as a 69. Can you believe it? The phenom is emerging here at Sheffield. Oh, want to class that belt? There we are. That'd be a costly mistake. Oh, whoa! <laughs> and here we are! Greatness on display as I got the shit go pushing past previous boundaries marching towards 600 kilos. She has dropped her weight class and she's putting up numbers she has never done before in the 76s or the 84s. Absolutely incredible. She is in the lead. So Anita, 250 kilos missed 245, opting to go up five kilos anyways. Now listen, both the 84 pluses miss their openers. And if you remember Worlds, the returning world champion Bonica bombed out on deadlifts. This is a little contentious. This is a little tense. I have no doubt that Sunita will smoke this. She's hit 262 and a half in the past. And her 245 was so fast, she nearly fell over. Well, five kilos, steady her base. Maybe 245 was just too easy. Lock the knees, looks good to me. A little bit of work at lockout, though. Yep. Three white lights. There you go, she's got a squat world, world record cemented in there. Breathes a sigh of relief. And where does that put Sonita? 698, just so, a couple kilos. Yeah, so she's got the total world record that it was 693.5, I yep. think. Yep. yep, she's over the world record and just a couple kilos off that 700 mark. 
We're seeing these marks fall, and Carlina, 252.5. 10 kilo jump, look, 242.5 look like work. 10 kilo jump is pretty big, but Carlina can level up. She has before, she did it in the squad event. She had a shaky opener, regained she did, form. Yeah. She's capable. And she has done more than this in the past. She's done it again. Oh, I said so close. Oh, oh, it's close. Fun. You know what? That's pretty close. She might be able to regain herself. She's got one more attempt. Mm, it's the fatigue at this point of the competition, though, is huge. Yeah, just came out on the right hand side, but that was oh so close. 255 for Brittany Schlitter. Joe, how do you feel about a seven and a half kilo jump missing your opener? I think it's risky, but if she wants to beat Sunita, she's going to have to do it. I respect the fact that the reigning world champion will go out on her shield defending her throne. So Brittany's done 257 and a half in the past. She did that in Malta. So this is this right is close. up against it. This is right up. This is very close. To be two and a half kilo from your personal best and you don't have an opener to fall back on should you miss. But Brit is willing to gamble it all to stay in the hunt. You got to respect it. This will give a 697.5. Monster total. Oh, and there it is. And that's the confidence of the lifter and the coach to say, I can do it. Put it and up. that looked like a second attempt. And it's got to be said, does she have more in the tank than Sunita? And can she can up, catch up and surpass? I think so. I think she did have more in the tank than Sunita. Sunita starts to struggle at lockout. Sunita had a fast start. Looks to be slowing down a little bit. And Britt looks to be picking up a little bit. It's going to be dramatic. It's not over till it's over. It's not over till it's over. And Amanda Lawrence, 262.5. 20 kilo jump from her opener. Pulls this. You all know what we're going to say. Asking them to bring it back. So this will give us 647. Oh, this is the world record then. It's 645 currently. This will give us 647. And only six kilos below her world record deadlift. A new world record in the 84 kilo class. It's there. And that's the sticking point for Amanda, right over the quads. And she gets it, three white lights. It was a tough lift though. It was, but she doesn't have to do much more to extend the deadlift world record as well. Yeah, she's already collecting bags broke the total world record, broke a squat world record. So regardless and of placing, she's got 10,000 pounds in the bank. You gotta think that she just load up the deadlift world record, doesn't have a whole lot to lose. And Tiffany Chapon, speaking of world records, broke the total world record, 170 on the bar now. This will put Tiffany at 431.5 for wow. a total. And here we are, the day that the 47 kilo class sees a, a total possibly in the 430s. Not long ago, that'd win you the 52 kilo class. But Tiffany, a 47 kilo lifter ahead of her time. And still a junior, or only just out of the juniors? Yeah, she's just getting started. The 2022 world's best lifter. This will be, she's already broken three world records. Oh, wow. And that was smooth, Joe. It was. And that moves her up a good four places where the lot of lifts is going to go. Turbo Tiff, three for three in the deadlifts, pushing the 47 world record into the 430s, covering new ground. Noemi Atleber, 205 kilos. That's a big deadlift for her, Joe. It is. She's done 200 in the past, but that was uh, that was an exceptional day out for her. And of course, Evie has already pushed the world record deadlift out of reach at 208.5. And so this will bring her total up to 455.
Little too much on the day. Noemi Alabashi was on the podium last year. But we have leveled up this competition. 216 now being loaded for Evie Corrigan. What? That is, that's insane. This will put her at 488.5. That's incredible. This is better than anything she's ever done a weight class up. The 208.5, it, it, it moved really well, but this is a big jump. This will move her temporarily into second place. And what a story it would be if Evie Corrigan can storm back and end up with a podium finish at Sheffield. So we already know then that we have a new Sheffield winner today. Evie is a once in a lifetime type of lifter. And if she'd be exceeding the world record by 6%, which is crazy considering she did that just a year ago. Think about that kind of improvement at the top end like that, unheard of. No, just a little too much today. You know, it, it was a little ambitious. She pulled a, a massive world record, and that was a lot to add on at the end. And I think it's only how low the 69 kilo total world record is that kept her off the top step this time again. Well, she'll be back again. And Corolla Gara, 225 kilos being loaded for her. This will put her at. 595 kilos, this is insane. It's insane, previously her best was 557.5. We're talking about 595 should she hit this. And she's really a 63 kilo lifter. The reigning, six, the reigning 63 kilo world champion. Some sensational performances here. It'll put her temporarily into first place. If she misses, she'll be in second place temporarily. And she will force Agatha to pull for the win, and Leah. But this is a huge deadlift for Corolla. She's trying to force Leah and Agatha to pull more than they can handle. And what a sensational battle the 69s have already given us. but not very far. And as I already said, still in second place so far. Podium finish might await her. I think Leah Bavois would like to sneak past. 582.5 sounds like a 76 kilo total to me. This is crazy. Natalie Richards, 230, currently in fifth place. This will keep her in fifth place, but she is fighting with Jad Jacob. Natalie just a stitch behind the world record deadlift, but should she hit this, it'll give her a 526.5 total. I would expect the French to change Jack Jacob's final deadlift, depending on, on if she hits this. I think if uh, Natalie pulls this, Jad is gonna find it hard to get past. The battle of the 57s has lived up already, Natalie, at 516.5. A kilo ahead of Jad. Oh! No, just that lockout. What a shame. She and did the work, she pulled the weight, and just couldn't hold on to it. And now Jad, 236.5. That's got to come down. It's, it might come down. It should come down. She doesn't need this much. She or does she want to move to fifth place? I should put it down. 231.5. Okay, yes. That's yeah. what I thought. So 231.5. This will still move her ahead of Natalie Richards. Jad, last year, upset the world champion at Sheffield. Can she do it again? 227 and a half moved well. It's her own world record. If you remember, 
this might what was 231 what they loaded and 231.5 would have been the winning pull at worlds yes. here's some redemption this is what should have been loaded this is what could have been loaded and if she hits this redemption at sheffield for jad jacob here we go this is a massive for jad jacob it's all come down to one final pull in the battle of the 57s. Jad said she wanted revenge. It's within reach. 30 seconds. And Jad Jacob wins the battle of the 57s and redemption and revenge for the French. See you in Lithuania. Superb. Wow. I already can't wait for the rematch. One for one now. And Jad Jacob's Sheffield record. 2-0 in the battle of the 57s. Leah Bavwa, 237.5. So this will not take her past Agatha. That's ranked 3-2. Yeah, it'll nudge her from third place to second place. So can we say it? Agatha Shitko has won Sheffield. Leah Bavwa. Scrapping for her placement on the podium. Would love to jump up from third to second. Whatever the result, she has put in a phenomenal performance today. It has been incredible. 585 should she hit this, which is a massive personal best for Leah. Previously personal best. 556.5. Think about that progress Leah's brought to the table. Oh, she's, she's done, done it. it. Huge final pull for Leah Babwa. 585. Again, that's a total that's competitive in the 76s. Absolutely incredible. And just like Corolla Gara, Leah can easily cut the 63. Imagine what the future might hold. And Agatha Shitko. So this will give her the 600 she told us she was coming for. Uncontested now, four and a lead here at Sheffield. Nobody's gonna catch up to her, but would like to finish with that 600 kilo prediction she gave. We all were wondering, was it just boastful? Was it just hype? Well, she's living up to the hype today. 248.5 world record deadlift, world record total, and new standard for the 69s. And 40,000 pounds in prize money. That's going to go an awful long way when she brings that back to Poland. And it looks like she's done it. Did it, Dick? Is it good? Agatha Shitko wins Sheffield 2024. 600 kilos. She did what she told us she'd do. We said she was inconsistent. She has gone nine for nine. Do you believe it? <laughs> Sensational performance. Unbelievable. I've been watching her live since her first competition in 2021, and I just can't believe how far she's gone. She pulled her Evie Corrigan. Moving down a weight class and winning Sheffield. It's happened again, ladies and gentlemen. And 252.5 for Carlina Tungatea. This will give her 610.5. And it will also move her. This is how tight it is. This will move it from 11th to 5th. Looking to crack the top five in one deadlift. That's a huge jump in the rankings. In the rankings among world champions, and the strongest women we've ever seen in this sport. She's 
finally extended her own total world record. This will push it another 10 kilos up. She rallied back in the squats. She might be able to rally back here. It was very close, just that lockout on the right side. She's capable. Oh, this one looks a little better. Keep yeah. Up. I think it has, fantastic. Let's out a war cry and that's how she wants to finish the day. Showing tons of heart, Kalinga Tongatea. 610.5. Cracks into the top five just like that, Joe. Look at how hit the yell at the top. We only have three more lifts to go in the women before we move on to the men. Sunita, 10 kilo jump, 260 kilos being loaded for her final pull. And again, this will move her from ninth to fifth. Looking to nudge her way into the top five. And it will also crack 700 kilos. This will give us 708. We haven't seen a 700 kilo plus at IPF world level stage. Could we see the first right now? This moves her back ahead of Brittany, takes the world record total back. Her oh, excuse Britain. me, no, she still has it. Now, was the lockout good? Yeah, I'll see what they like say. Three white lights it is. So she's extended the total world record. And that is the total world record entering the 700s resting at 705 if temporarily because canada's britney schlater still has to pull has 276 might be a placeholder that's a placeholder i think uh, they'll bring that down yeah that's but they'll have to be 21 kilo jump yeah okay so yeah there it goes they brought it down it's going to be britney next amanda lawrence 269 so she is loading up the deadlift world record we both thought probably the good play might as well take a swing at that bag she's collecting yeah, bags so. everywhere but it's going to be britney she's going to load up what she needs oh 267.5 there we are so this will put britney into the top five and she'll finish with a 710 kilo total and she'll take back the total world record back from sunita Brittany's reign as queen of the 84 plus has been threatened with a 708 total. Can she retain the throne? She's hit 257 and a half in the past. We have never seen her attempt this kind of weight. And to move from top 10 to top five amongst the field of women like we see at Sheffield, it's quite the jump quite the accolade 27.5 it's huge but Brittany's pulled off miracles big 10 kilo personal best should she hit this oh and she's hit it and that looked like a second attempt like if she was pressed she could have more three white lights and Brittany Slater wow I'm blown away by that deadlift we could see her take the biggest deadlift in the IPF very soon. That was easy. Yeah, if she needed it, there was more in the tank. Speaking of the biggest deadlift in IPF history, Amanda Lawrence, 269. This will put her at 653.5. That is the world, the world record total coming in was 645. So she's already gone a couple of kilos over that. Got the squat world record, the total world record. Would love to grab that deadlift world record. She said that at uh, Sheffield last year with 268.5. It's the logical move. She's got nothing to lose. 5,000 more pounds. If she can get this.
And this is a monstrous deadlift. Oh, she's still grinding it. Still going. Can she? Oh, just that lockout. And that was oh so close for Amanda. That was a fraction of an inch away. And she broke the squat world record. She broke the total world record. She's going home with 10,000 pounds. Yeah, 10,000 pounds for her day and setting the world standard a little bit higher and came very close for that final record. Just it's, an inch. It's worth reminding people that the SPD have flown all these athletes out. The, the airfares and hotel do not come out of that prize money. This has all been paid for by SPD. It's all above and beyond. And Panagiotis will kick off the men's deadlift with 270 kilos, the reigning 66 world champion. We thought it'd be a battle of the 66s, but Kyoto, at least so far, pacing for first. But the deadlifts haven't even started, and a lot can happen. So there's a lot to keep track of. We will... Try and keep track of the deadlift world records, the total world records, the placing in the competition, but it is so fast moving. Now, I think we saw Panna do a 290 in training, Ryan, is that right? I believe I might have seen him do a 292.5. Right, okay. He's going to need every one of those kilos, maybe even a little more. Yeah. Look good. Yeah, it looks smooth. That's about as quick as Penna moves. He looks quite disheartened, though. Now it'll be interesting to see where he goes from there. Maybe a 10 kilo jump to 280. Kyoto, speaking of 280, opening there. This will put him at a total of 690. 705 won worlds, 710 is the world record. 10.5, sorry. Kyoto. Really doing a lot to push the sport of powerlifting in Japan. By far and away the biggest star over there. Been putting out a lot of great content online. Spoke with him. And he said that's his goal to try to popularize powerlifting in that region. How far would that go if he was to pull off the upset at Sheffield? Oh my goodness. What the story that would be. Oh, oh, and it's the knees. It's so fast, but it's the knees that always become a bit of a issue. Gets three white lights, but he's got to be careful he's, with unlocking yeah. those knees. Yeah, as soon as he leans back that far, the knees unlock, and I think he's risking red lights for that. Strength but, is not an issue, but pay attention to that right knee on the left side of your screen. I think it won't be as... Oh, it opens yeah. up, and he's, it's just... He's got to be careful if that happens on an opener. Gavin Aiden, 295 for his opener. And Gavin, I'm expecting to go way over that. He's hit 340 before. Hopefully he's just opening light. He took a fairly big jump in squat. I'm expecting him just to solidify this to protect his squat world record, yeah. and hopefully it's a big jump after that. I'm told his deadlift training has gone great for this prep. Okay. And he is pulling conventional. <laughs> he is. He's pulling conventional, and that was so fast. <laughs> they took no risks with that opener and expecting a big jump. And they also want to conserve energy. They know Gavin. And Delaney Wallace with 310 kilos. And again, the storyline, Delaney, Delaney Wallace chasing history for that 83 kilo 841 kilo total. If he hits this, he's at 822.5, and we are right in reach. And he is having a great day. He's having the time of his life out there. 
I think he can do it. Somewhere in the US, Russell or he is watching with bated breath. His record's in danger. Okay, it was good. Oh. It's the balance that happens at the sumo, but it was in time for the down yeah, command. Sure. Three white lights. Yeah, Gotta study himself. Lift. Yeah. <laughs> So do you think he's got another, he'll need, what, another 20 kilos from that? And, and you know, well, the thing is, if it's a balance issue on the sumo, it looks a little more untidy than it really is, yeah. not a strength, so it's hard to tell with sumo. 310 for Carl Johansson. What do you think, Joe? I would like to believe Delaney can do it. Um, he missed on the final deadlift last time. I'd love to see him get it this time. You see the obvious pathway around 10 kilos more and then another 10 kilo range around after that? Uh, with change, Carl Johansson, 310, the reigning 74 kilo champion, pacing for a top five in a massive battle with Tim Monogatti. It's close, he's only three and a half kilos behind Tim right now. And Carl, historically speaking, has a bigger deadlift. Yeah, but look at this, Tim's opening heavier. Yep. And that's where, historically speaking, you never know because yeah. today is today and these lifters progress at different rates. So we know Callie's got a massive deadlift, but we've only seen him do 328 on the platform. We know he's been brewing up something massive, but we've seen Tim do 345 in training. Yeah, both these lifters have done 340 and up in training. And Tim Monogatti has revenge on his mind, barely missing that world championship. When people talk about who won Worlds, who won seeded the great Taylor Atwood and beat the GOAT, they talk about Callie Johansson and lost in the fold is Tim Monogatti, who had the same total and also beat Taylor Atwood. This is his moment. Of course, since then, Chell Backlund has gone past with the 800 total. Oh. But that is in danger today. Yeah, and Chell in attendance, watching. He'll be meeting these young lads at Worlds in Lithuania. So that pulls Tim Monogatti ahead of Calais now by a few more kilos, but it is still very close. Jonathan Kaiko, 320 kilos. This will put him at 865.5. And Jonathan under heavy fire by Gustav Hedlund and potentially Gavin Aiden, depending on how Gavin's deadlifts round up, to Gavin loading up 320 for a second attempt. Of course, Carlos, a massive puller. Very interested in seeing where he ends up. Current best is 347 and a half. So we should have headroom here. And he'll rise to the occasion should he have to. And I think today he's gonna have to. That was a nice opener for Jonathan. Anatoly Novopismani with 325. This will put him at 915.5 total. The record is 940, which is his. And he looks to be a top five, possibly podium favorite all of a sudden. Should he be able to keep pace? Obviously still early days and a lot can happen in the, dead, in the deadlift event. He hit 352 and a half on his way to that 940 total in Malta. Let's see how 325 moves. He did say it was a back injury he was nursing. Wow, okay, wow. Still not seeing any signs of it. Still not seeing, he might be the best poker player there is. Three white lights. And Gustav Hedlund, 327.5. This will put him at 867.5 and nudge him ahead of Keiko. And again, Gustav, historically speaking, has a bigger deadlift than Keiko. So if he takes the lead with the opener, it'll be difficult for Keiko to catch up. Not impossible, but difficult. 
Oh my goodness. That moved really well. Kerfest yeah, is 345, but it looks like he's got more in the tank today. And he's been looking for revenge on that 2021 Worlds. Three thirty for Tony Cliff. Huge pop from the audience for the home nation hero. Tony's got a lot more than three thirty in the tank, so this should move quickly. I'm sitting for the three sixty-five. Nice and comfortable lap. Carlos Pedersen Griffith, 340 kilos for his opener. Now you said he's been doubling 365, was it? 362.5, but who's counting? Pretty close. This will put Carlos's total at 855, already a personal best for Carlos, I believe. Yep, 847.5 at Worlds. In his opener, he's already got a total PR. Where is Carlos going to end up if he's got 20 plus more kilos in the tank, he's going to have a handsome total. Oh my goodness. He's put the next three on notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he deserves that pep he's got in his step. Carlos said he's coming to Sheffield to make a statement and the statement has already been made. Jesus stretching the back a little bit. 380 kilos being loaded for his opener. Oh, his deadlift's really been moving. Yeah, in training, he's been 400 plus. 410, he's made look like an opener in training. Now, I'm not sure if it's telling if he's stretching his back or not. I'm not going to read too much into that. We've seen him absolutely smoke 420 in training. This is 380. We'll give him a 1113 total. Oh, oh. oh wow. Lost his balance. Just a little too quick. Strength looked like it's there. Well, was it grip or was it balance? I heard. I think both. If you look, his grip does oh. go, but I don't know if that's because he went backwards. I don't think it's a grip issue. I think literally just lost his back. It was so fast. He ended up on his heels. I think the grip's there, but so it may be just a little too light. Maybe. We saw that with all three of our super heavyweights missed their opening deadlift. Oh my gosh. Penna, 290. Penna wow. doing a 20 kilo jump. Please pull up Penna's previous that is a personal. Massive, He's going all in. Yeah. I, I, I told you before, Penna, yeah, 285 is his previous previous personal best on the platform. Five kilo personal best on the second attempt. Penna pushing all of his chips to the middle as he's done before. He did attempt this way to the Euros. He did get very far with it. 20 kilo jump. This will temporarily put him in first. Obviously, plenty more deadlifts to go. The 20 kilo jump in the 66 kilo class is huge. It's monstrous. And Penn is the type of guy to do this kind of thing. He will come home with his shield or on it. The leap he would take, it'll take him from 682.5 to 702.5 already and his best is 705 it is such a gamble oh my gosh and how do you like Penna 290 it is truly he is the king of brains and that is why he's a legend in the making Wow, forces Kyoto's hand now. Really impressive. It looked like he'd run out of steam about mid shin, but he just kept moving. When Penna needs to find it, he will dig down into that well. 
20 kilo jump in the 66 kilo class and forcing Kyoto's hand now. But how much is, more has he got? Will he be able to respond if Kyoto goes up? Who knows with Pena, but Kyoto, who at 280, had some technical issues with the knees. This will put Kyoto at 705, two and a half kilos ahead of Pena. Oh, this is tight. Only 5.5 kilos below the total world record. And Kyoto, as the story always is, needs to watch those knees. He leans back and unlocks them. The strength is there. Whoa. I can't do it. I can't finish it. And wow. we have one more deadlift to go, but this has been... And he, he told Kedrick, it's the thumb. Hopefully the thumb didn't tear. Wow, what a battle, Joe. So let's see this replay back. He gets it moving. Yeah, the thumb. He, and he, he said to his coach and yeah. showed it. Hopefully the skin didn't come off. You're not going to grow that back in five minutes. It did look like the lockout was tough, though. The lockout as well, even if he got it to the top, it'd be difficult. But it's not over yet. And Kyoto is all types of strong. Gavin Aiden. 310 kilos. 320? 320 kilos, sorry. This will put him at 862. <laughs> 25 kilo jump, but 295 was like he's standing out it of was, a chair. It was really fast. It was really fast, really clean, really solid. He's pulled 340. He's taking big jumps. If this moves like a second should, we can expect another 20 kilo jump from him and end up around 340, maybe a little more, should he think he needs it. Looking at Gustav, he might. Yeah, that was easy. That really, was an opener. Really easy. He's got so much left to respond with in his third. He's got more than 20 kilos in the tank, and he's conserving to go all in. And would you expect anything less from Gavin Aiden? Absolutely not. Him and Penner share that mentality. This is it. Delaney Wallace loading up the 83 kilo world record. So 330 will give him four, or sorry, 842.5 kilos. I had heard him say he wanted to enter the 850s by his third attempt. Here we are. The first man past the world record, the first man past 100%. This is the world record that eluded him last year, Sheffield, an inch away from lockout. Is it redemption for Delaney? He'll have another shot at it, even if he misses this one. But the way 310 moved. There it is. Redemption for Delaney Wallace. Delaney Wallace leads Sheffield. No more doubt he's been chasing this record. So many questions about his title reign. And that was a, a cool little 5,000 pound bonus for that as well as the record. Finally, Russell Orhees record falls. And Carl Johansson, 330 kilos, 0.5. Shell Backlin, who holds the total world record, holds the deadlift world record as well. And Cali looking to break that in his second attempt. This will put him at 785.5 total. Cali pulled 328 previously for a best. PR territory. Here we go, it's more than he's done on the platform before, but we know he's got a massive deadlift. Not only does he have a big deadlift, he proved at last year's Worlds, he can rise to the occasion when he needs to.
And nice. Was, yeah, nice, and he's got more left there. That was pretty smooth for a world record, Joe. Callie Johansson has more in the tank and ready to defend the 74 kilo throne. He moves ahead of Tim Monogatti, if temporarily, as Tim Monogatti will attempt 331 to take that record, nudge past Cali, and temporarily into third. He has been incredibly impressive today. He's only missed one lift. He missed his uh, last dead, uh, bench. And his deadlift has been moving fast in training. Sixteen kilo jump for Tim. Tim's pulled 345 in training. That's back home in New Zealand. We're a long ways away from there. But the way Tim's been lifting today, I wouldn't doubt him. Here he comes. I think he can do it. I think he's going to do it. I think both these gentlemen are going to push over 800. If you're wanting, Carl. We talk about weight cuts hurting your total. We talk about traveling hurting your total. This is the man proving all that wrong. Yeah, Tim, Carlina, Evie, they're a different breed though. Oh my gosh. Wow, that was just as easy as Kelly's. That looked like a second attempt, not a world record. And that's what you want to see. If I told you a world record just fell right there, you would ask me why it was so smooth. Anatoly with 335. I can see that uh, Kelly is trying to push past the 800 kilo barrier as well on his third attempt. Yeah, Kelly has in 348, which would give him 803. And Tim has 350, which would give him 808.5. Obviously, these are placeholders as for now. You could change your last attempt twice on Dennis. Anatoly will have 925.5 should he hit this. He's pacing to be just a little bit under the total world record. Maybe he'll take a big jump if this one moves well. Yeah, if he's got a sore back, he might be saying, I got one big pull in me. Let's save it for the end. Yeah, it looks, it's, it's getting a little stiff. His, his face did show some uh, pain actually. He's doing well, considered. And Jonathan Keiko, 20 kilo jump, 340 kilos. Previous personal best is 347.5, so you know the type of pressure he's under. And this will put him just two and a half kilos underneath the total world record with one pull to go. And he's gonna need it. He's thus far trailing Gustav, but not by much. If he hits and Gustav hits, he'll take the lead on Gustav and try to retain and hold. This is gonna be dramatic. And Keiko assumes the lead in the battle of the 93s. And that was solid as well. He's definitely got a little bit more left to come back and fight at the end. It's good game day handling because now if Gustav hits his second attempt, Keiko's behind, or Keiko's ahead, sorry, and Gustav's behind. He's a real candidate for the podium now, Gustav Hedlund. Made easy work of that one, Joe. And Gustav pre previously has hit 345, so Keiko actually has a bigger deadlift. Keiko in the lead with a slightly bigger deadlift, historically speaking. But is his deadlift still slightly bigger? I, you know, this is the thing, because 
Gustav has looked amazing today. Yeah, his squats jumped up so much. How much has his deadlift moved up? That's why it's so tight to call. 360, 20 kilo jump for Carlos Pedersen Griffith. His opening was super quick. What a day he's had. He may not have ended up with the squat world record, but he absolutely broke it. He gets his name in the history books there. And just a stitch below 800 pounds on his second attempt, Carlos Pedersen Griffith, three white lights. Already at 875 kilo total, and that is world class. He came into the Sheffield event saying, I just want to prove I belong here and I'm a world-class lifter. Already done He's that done with that. one more yeah. attempt to go. Tony Cliff, 30 kilo jump. He typically takes big jumps, but that is a big one. Crowd is behind him. He's done 365. And that was smooth. Well, Whoa. I was just about to say how smooth that was until the lockout. Also, that, I've never seen so many people stumbling at the top of their deadlift. Yeah, this is a little bit odd. We're not used to seeing the stumble at the top. And speaking of Jesus, retaking 380. Now, of course, all his plans for what he was going to do today and all the expectations cannot be met because he had a difficult time on bench and now he's missed his deadlift opener too. And 380 looked pretty quick and easy for Jesus, but lost balance at the top. And, you know, you see the balance being lost at sumo, not this much with conventional like we've been seeing. No, and I'm surprised he didn't go up because the strength was there. It was very easy. I'm expecting him to make easy work of this 380 kilos. Oh, he's kind of back on his heels again, but he makes it. Three by lights. So yeah. that cements his squat world record as well. That's right. Otherwise, he'd have had to give that back if he didn't manage to give a dead, get a deadlift in. And I think he could take a decent jump, probably into the 400 kilos. The strength is there. He just tips back onto his heels. But what's crazy is that he is forecasted in last place. And that's not something anyone would have predicted. No, nah, he was far and away the favorite overall. But taking the big jump on the bench means he was 20 kilos in the hole just by missing his uh, second bench. Pena coming out to 297.5. This would move him from fourth to second and be a massive personal best. Seven and a half kilo jump. Is it overly ambitious? 290 was hard. But why not put on the bar what you need? Because what else are you going to do? I think this is ambitious. This is very ambitious, but I tell you what. Pena is an ambitious young man. If anyone can, Pena can. Yeah. He's found reserves where you thought they've all been depleted. And this is different. He's definitely handling this last attempt with a new intensity. He has never come close to this kind of weight. Could he do it today? So much on the line here. Oh, it's a little too much. I mean, the heart of the man to come out and try it. 702.5 for Penna. Let's see if Kyoto changes his last attempt. 
He's going to go for the record. It'll put him into first place temporarily. So it won't be the deadlift record, but it will be the total record. It'll leave him with 712.5 and move him temporarily into first place. Wow. 295 was difficult. Looked like his, he had grip issue with his thumb. And then he's got to watch those knees. Can he make the adjustment? What a story that would be. I think he got the down command, yeah. So close, he's so strong and so close to these deadlifts. It was the same story last year. He's absolutely devastated, but he didn't wait for the down command. He did not return to the bar back to the platform. He tried, yeah, I think he tried to sell it and I don't blame him, <laughs> I don't blame him. I think I tried to sell it too, but it is what it is. And Delaney Wallace, Look He's at the ranking the here. Lead. Who would have thought? Currently in first place. Still more lifting to go. I don't think anyone had Delaney Wallace for the win. And and there's a lot of lifting and left to go, but still, oh my gosh. Delaney Wallace. 335 will put him to 847.5 for a total. Already at 842.5. So he's going to force the hands of the people coming up behind him. Delaney having the lifting day of his life, silencing critics. Gonna get the oh, so it. close. But let's be honest, Delaney, a fantastic day here at Sheffield Super. 2024. And he's currently in the lead with, you know, he's got some challenges to come. Grabbing his peck, he probably had a bit of a cramp there at the top. Okay, please load the bar, ladies and gentlemen. Two, three, four, right now, he's the man to be. Five kilos. This is for Sweden's Kali. 340.5 kilos for Carl Johansson. This won't push him through the um, total world record, though. No, it'll leave him at 795.5, total world record being 800 kilos even. But it will bring him in the rankings onto the podium, if, temp if temporarily, at third. And it will take the deadlift world record back from Tim Monogatti. 5,000 pounds there. There is a lot of Swedes in attendance here today. Cheering on Carl Johansson, cheering on Gustav Hedlund, and those men are providing. This to take the deadlift world record back and to get on the podium. A little too much on the day. That was a surprise, actually. I did expect him to move back. Yeah, we've seen him shift heavier weight in training. But it's hard when you're doing it here and you've emptied the tank on squat and bench. It's a, it's a tough one. Gavin Aiden, 345, a 25 kilo jump for him, but 320 moves so quickly, it looked like really it could have been an opener. This will put Gavin at 80, 887 kilos for a total and move him temporarily into second place. I think the total world record is, is it 888? 
It is, so he's just underneath it. But we spoke to him before, the temptation to chase the record and overreach. This would also move him ahead of all the other 93s. It's forcing their hand, and should they load up and miss, Gavin wins the battle. He's played a great game today. Aiden, 887 kilo total. He has pulled himself ahead of the rest of the pack. And Gavin takes the lead in the battle of the 93s. <laughs> He's enjoying this moment in the line. Like he yeah. deserves it. Yeah, the refs asked his coach, come and get your lifter. And the coach is like, well, I think I'll let him out there a couple seconds. It's not that easy. Gavin will be a tough guy to bully off the stage. And Jonathan Keiko, 347.5 for the win. This will move him from third to first. Of course, it'll be temporary with some other lifters left to come. But this should be within reach for Keiko. He's done this way before. He's looked good. This has been a well-played battle plan. It'll put him, at, put him at 893 and really force Gustav's hand. Currently only Delaney is past the world record total. He's locked it out. And Keiko moves into the lead. And that is why Jonathan Keiko is Jonathan Keiko. Yet again, faced against those odds. That was clearly an emotional moment for him. As you say, he came back. He battled through. Showing tons of heart. He did it all. He did all he could. He left it on the platform. Yeah. Whatever Gustav does. And all the other lifters, Tim Monagati. Kaiko can leave knowing he left it all on the yeah, platform. Absolutely. That was a great performance. He's got himself onto the top step. People are on the feet. I can no longer see the stage. And Delaney Wallace nudged into second place now. As Tim looks to take first place and nudge Kaiko and Delaney down. 348.5, Joe, this is a huge deadlift in this weight class. It's massive. I mean, we've seen him do these weights in training, but taking that huge jump right at the end, extends his own deadlift world record, takes the total world record, and moves him into the lead. 8.07 as a 74. And temporarily, at least, in number one position at Sheffield overall. Tim wants it all. Could we see a second New Zealand winner? Oh. oh, it was, do you know, it was a heroic attempt. Yeah. Tim has pulled a lot in training. It wasn't an unrealistic load. He might as well have loaded it. So our podium right now is Keiko, Delaney, and Gavin. And it's totally up next, a 15 kilo jump, 350 kilos being loaded to leave him with 940.5, that is over the world record of 940. And, and move him. Knock Gavin off the podium. It'll knock Gavin off the podium and moving him into third. It's probably a big ask. 335 look like his back tightened up on him. If you can do it in front of any crowd, you can do it in front of this crowd.
valiant effort. It absolutely was. So we are right at the sharp end of the competition now with four lifts remaining. <laughs> and Gustav Hedlund, 365, that can't be. He'll be changing that, no? Yeah, we. I think we. I heard overhead there's going to be a change. Yeah, 355 will That's win right. now. 355 will move Gustav Hedlund fourth from fourth to first overall. Wow. And give him an 895 total. This would be a story. Yeah, this would be huge. Look at the look on his face. He looks confident. He's already smiling. This would be huge. He's done 345 on the first platform. Can he do ten kilos more? If he wins not only the battle of the 93s, but moves himself into first place. Oh, what a story that would be. Oh! He done it. it was and easy. Revenge it is for Gustav Hedlund. He's waited all these years for this moment to finally emerge as the number 193. And here we are. It's not quite over, but it's hard to see how he could be knocked off the top spot now. Carlos Peterson Griffith still left the pole, but wow. Gustav quite rightly enjoying his moment. He's in first place. Yeah, Jesus, nah, it looks, all right. I'm not ready to crown him, you're right, but whoa. It would have to be something really it, it would, special to get past. Because, yeah, it, it's only Jesus, but that 350 or 450 has to be a placeholder. Well, I don't know. The 450 gives him the 1183 he was looking for, but uh, it right. seems it's. Seems yeah, you know unlikely. what? Maybe, oh, I mean. What a crazy story, Gustav now. And Carlos Patterson himself looking to move into the podium. Wow. 375. He's got a lot of work to do to get that up. This is not how we thought the podium would look. It really isn't. Gustav, Carlos. Who would have thought? 25 seconds. He's 15 kilos away from doing it. Can he pull it off? Well, I think this knocks Keiko off the podium, if he does. Oh, just too much, but he loaded it up, and I respect the fact he was shooting for the podium. He's had a great day. Oh, he's had an excellent day. He made his point. And Tony Cliff now. 385 kilos, Joe. Missed 360, going up 25 kilos. This is a long way north of anything he's done before. <laughs> this is insane. That would, this will give him, though, Dennis Cornelius's total world record, moving from 12th to 4th. But he missed 360. 385 is a long way ahead. I can't believe but he's loading up the world record. It stood so long, Dennis Cornelius is probably watching this. If he hits this, my goodness, they'll be dancing in the streets of Sheffield. Oh, this is a place just exploded. Everyone's the on their feet. My rib cage is vibrating. The crowd is on their feet. We can't even see the platform. We got our monitors. No, oh, no. You know what? Bless he him. came out for all his lifts. He had a go at it. All right, Jesus has dropped it to 429. Okay. okay, this will take him from 11 to first. So Jesus looking to bump down Gustav, retain his title, and I think he's got 429 in him. What, what a come from behind victory this would be. Can he lock it out though? We've seen him do 426 in training, but at this level and this amount of fatigue, oh. can he 
solidify that lockout. That's his brother in his ear right there. And look at the eyes of the strongest man that ever lived. I would love to hear what Pablo's telling him. I think he's got the strength. From 11th to 1st, a come from behind victory, and to go back to back, Jesus Oliveras. It gets no more tense than this. He's had a bad day. Can he still win on a bad day? Oh my gosh. Let that bull charge. He's gonna charge out of those gates. This is the most dramatic final bender. This one pull is worth 35,000 pounds. 35,000 pounds on the line. It's a year's salary. Oh. Well, that is not how we expected this to go at all. And Gustav Hedlund. That's incredible. I did not have him in top spot. Wow. Take a look at the standings. I got the shit go. Winning Sheffield 2024 with a sensational 600 kilo total as a 69, followed by Leah Bavois and Corolla Gara riding winding down your podium with 585 and 582.5 excellent performances on the women's side and then eb corrigan and Brittany schlater rounding off the top five as we look at the men's side gustav hedlin with a sensational upset victory winning sheffield 2024 and finally defeating Jonathan Keiko, who comes in second and also has an amazing performance. And how about that Delaney Wallace been chasing that 83 kilo world record and hits it with 842.5, Gavin Aiden in number four, and Penna rounding up the top five with a sensational performance as well. There are a lot of things that we can't actually talk about, but I would think there isn't a month that goes by worldwide that one of our trophies that's been produced in our workshops isn't being presented across all different sorts of fields, from golf to football, tennis, snooker, but we have never done powerlifting, so we were delighted to be asked to be involved in creating this trophy for you. Hello, I'm Jackie Tia. I'm the owner of British Silverware in Sheffield. For us as a manufacturer from the UK, it's not often that you actually get asked by a manufacturer of the UK to actually produce something. So for me, the ability to work with the SBD guys has been really great because they are manufacturers themselves and understand the process. The significance of these trophies being made in Sheffield for a Sheffield event, for me, is huge. It gives my team the opportunity to discuss with their families something about an event that's happening in Sheffield and share with them what they've been doing. And it, it's great to be able to have something that's been presented that you know has been made here. I think British Silverware is unique because I'm not sure there are many businesses or companies in our, our industry that have all the skill sets in one place. And that's really important for our clients. There are other places in the world that you can go and get trophies made. Do I think they're as good, or the quality is as good as British silverware's? Probably not, no.
And welcome back to Sheffield 2024 for the medal ceremony. And Joe, what a story this is. Gustav Hedlund, 2018 Junior World Champion, has been hunting for that number one spot for so long. And at Sheffield, not only does he take the number one spot for the 93s, but solidifies himself as the king of kings. Absolutely phenomenal. But I think we're gonna look at the ladies first. We have Zidrinas Zavikas, who is the uh, many-time world's strongest man, yeah, to for, present the trophies. Former IPF lifter himself took a silver medal, and here's Corolla Gara coming out in the third position. I lost track of the records she broke. She broke the squat world record twice, the bench record once. I think she broke the total record, I don't know, once, twice, three times. For her to be finishing with a 582.5 kilo total, for a lady that just moved, for the, moved up from the 63s and could easily cut right back to the 63s. Leah Babla from France, massive 585 total, taking second place. I mean, second place, and she put 40 kilos on the world record total, taking squat world records along the way. Yeah, you could tell by the smile on her face. Look, she came in second, but she's okay with that. How can you be upset with 585 at that body weight? Absolutely. And massive PBs in every single lift for Leah. And here it is, <clears throat> the star of the night. The queen of powerlifting has been crowned 600 kilos as a 69. I got the ship go. She has finally ticked off one of the few things she hasn't won yet. She's won the World Equip, she's won the World Games. And, and now, now she's, she's won, won Sheffield. Sheffield. This is Juna Savikas giving her the trophy. And I think she walks away with 40,000 pounds in prize money. An all-star podium there. And an all 69 kilo class podium. We suspected it. We thought Evie might sneak on there. Every one of these ladies has won world records, won world titles, and now podium finishers here at Sheffield. Incredible performance. Agatha Shitko, still a junior. She has just blown up powerlifting in two years. And up next is the men. What an upset. As we take a peek in the wings. And this is this is a podium many didn't expect. Delaney Wallace in third. A great performance from him. He took Russell his total world record. He led the field for a while. Been chasing that world record for so long. Two time world champion. He wanted to prove a point by taking that world record. He was so close to it last year. He manifested it this year. Taking the silver trophy. And in second place, multiple time world champion and all time great, Jonathan Keiko. He took the silver last year, he's taken the silver again this year. And he, he honestly put in a phenomenal performance. He did. Showed a lot of heart, showed a lot of grit. Broke the bench world record, broke the total world record. Made himself some money. And an upset, but we're starting to expect that here at Sheffield. Gustav Hedlund winning Sheffield 2024. I don't think many people predicted that Gustav Hedlund would be on the top step of this podium today, <laughs> but here he is. He's shaking his head like he could hardly believe it himself. It's happened. That believe fantastic it. trophy handed out by Big Z. That is not the podium that many people predicted. Phenomenal performances from all three of them. And stay tuned 
as we will have interviews with the Sheffield champions. Thank you, gentlemen. It was a real pleasure. But Ryan, we had some thrills and spills. We had some surprises tonight, but it's been an incredible Thank competition. Yeah, this is one for the book. Sheffield delivered. I think that's got to be undeniable. As the gentlemen exit the stage, I think we say goodnight. No, uh, we have interviews actually. Stay tuned for an interview with Agatha Shitko and Gustav Hedlund. Oh, I think we have one more reveal. That is the Sheffield 25 logo. Oh, nice. So she doesn't need an introduction, but I will give her one anyway. Agatha Shitko, your 2024 Sheffield champion, still a junior, an amazing day, total 600 kilos, better than your 76 total, I believe. How on earth are you feeling right now? It's, it's really crazy. It hasn't really registered fully yet, but yeah, it's like, well, I'm, I don't know. I'm speechless. <laughs> I bet. I mean... You you surpassed Jen Thompson's bench, you surpassed Kimberly Wolford's deadlift. Those are some big names. How did it feel to kind of step past them in a sense? It's an honor, definitely. They're really big names and like, yeah, it's great. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Now, I'm sure you're aware, but you beat the current 69 kilo total by 51 kilos. Mm -hmm. That is out of this world and secured your spot for Sheffield next year. How does that feel? Again, it feels surreal, like, I don't know what to say. I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm speechless. It's crazy. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Are you going to celebrate big, do you think? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, we're going to go out and eat some fried chicken. That's <laughs> the number one thing. I bet, I bet you're hungry. Well, how was the cup for you? It wasn't really that bad. I, I wasn't walking hungry most of the time, just for the last two weeks, I think. So it was pretty easy. Definitely working with a dietitian helped a lot. Yeah, and I think a big question on a few people's mind is, do you think you'll stay at 69 heading into Worlds? You're not sure about that yet? No, I'm sure I'm going up, back up to the 76s. Yes. There's some unfinished business there. <laughs> I bet you heard it, 76s. She's not done with you just yet. Another huge congratulations. I hope you enjoy your fried chicken and your celebration. And once again... Huge congratulations to our new 2024 Sheffield champion, Agata Shitko, Poland. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thanks. Gustav Hedlund, your 2024 Sheffield World Champion. How are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm uh, speechless, actually. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, it's like world new, new total world record, winning. Oh, it's amazing. It's like, I was like, what? <laughs> and it was easy. I had so much more to give. Wow. I felt, yeah, strong. So tell me, 2021, you get fifth. Fucked up. 2022. No, that was the fifth. 
or 20, sorry, 2020. Second, yeah. Yeah, and then last this past year you got second. Yeah. Your wild card. No, you're, I, I. This coming into the Sheffield. I was the not the wild card, but almost. I don't. I don't remember what but, it was called. But was nonetheless, like, so you yeah. got you, you were 4.3 percent. Yeah. Nobody believed me. Nobody believed in you. How did you feel coming into this? Did you think you could win? Yeah, I was very sure of myself. I was like, I know I, I know I can do this, but though I had a bit of a pec, pec injury before, so I was a bit nervous about the bench. Uh, but otherwise, I knew I had like a new nutritionist. I have a good coach. I do my training. I've done this for more than 10 years. I like, yeah, yes. Yeah. So you, coming out of your second attempt on bench, you missed it. Yeah. What was going through your mind there? Uh, I was happy that I didn't have pain in my chest. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, this is good. So now we can just do like the, uh, do it better next time. Yeah. So 895, close yeah. to that 900 yeah, coveted yeah. total. Yeah, I do you to. think it's there? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I could have done more in squat and deadlift was really easy. So, and if, if my chest is like good, then I benched 221 at home. Very easy. Uh, so I know I have like plus 900, but uh, next year. All right. Well, you have the automatic bid yes. for Sheffield yes, 2025. Yes. Um, my, my next question really is, are you going to push it at Worlds? Uh, yeah, I want, I have won everything I can win except Worlds now. So I want to win Worlds. Okay. I've only won it as a junior. Wow, yeah, so it'll be your first Open World Championship, all right. If I win, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. You never know, you never know. Well, congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed everything. Yeah, this... It was an awesome meet. And like, oh, shit, what a meet. Yeah. What the f oh, shit, it's crazy. It's unbelievable. Well, you heard it here. You're a 2024 Sheffield champion. Uh, you you thank... do like this, right? Yeah. <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in. You guys saw world records being broken. Stay tuned for next year.